Oh, we live. What's up? Happy Saturday. Welcome back to The Build, episode... Seven. Seven. Interviews. Yeah. So first yeah, interview segment. We got to chop it up with some other people, man. Yeah. Yeah. Get Before we do, time. though, I do yeah. want to say one thing. Before we get into this, because uh, our guest tonight actually collabs a lot, right, with, with action figures and dioramas. And I have a, a little sweet story that I found out today. So... My, I didn't know they did this at school, but my my son had drew this like fire raptor and like he drew the legs and it turned out his buddy, uh, I'm not going to name his name, do like the head and did some coloring and did the sweet collab. And I thought this was pretty cool to lead into tonight because Alex has a lot of collabs with diorama artists and action figures. Yeah. And those are true collabs, right? That's that's the collab that makes this whole community work, right? That mm -hmm. camera to dio collab or camera to action figure collab. And I thought this was a fitting little sweet story uh, leading in tonight. Uh, but with it, let's go ahead and get into it. And let's uh, bring in Alex Richardson, a very talented photographer. Actually, Mario, you take it over. You, you take over the intro. Yeah, yeah. So Alex is, uh, he's one of the original homies when I first started 796, man. This guy... I mean, we're obviously going to let him do his intro, but man, he is one of the best toy photographers out there. And um, not only that, but he he's also a maker of sorts. Um, he does weathering. I mean, he, he's known for his cinematic lighting and just the way he manipulates the dioramas in the background um he gets a lot of mileage out of these things man and i'm always like amazed with like the new stuff he comes up with but uh yeah without further ado let's bring in our boy alex hey hey so, y'all you know who it is <laughs> <What's happened? laughs> oh yeah oh i forgot to mention also uh one of the uh co-hosts of the shutterbugs podcast and that's a, a bi-yearly podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> well, happy Saturday, Alex. Podcast. Yeah. what's up alex how you been man i've been good you know just uh trying to paint when i can and all that other stuff not shooting currently i know that's been a point of contention with a lot of my followers but yeah whatever you, you know but that, you you um you're like the mandalorian right you 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 go into production and then you release <laughs> like it just drop it so everyone can binge right yeah and yeah We'll go with that. <laughs> we'll say that's what it is. You'll be my new PR person for everyone that hey, complains. Hey, man, I am the master procrastinator, so I know how to spin. I know. I, I'm the one that gave you the nickname. I know. Yes. I see all those unused figures in the back. Oh, man. <laughs> Everything, dude. Everything. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. No, but you know what? Alex is also my, uh, for on the rare occasion where I take a photo he is my soundboard and he is always there to keep me in check and let me know that you can do better you know and um <laughs> I, I think that speaks to to alex's you know not only him as a person pushing himself to be the best but like his work too you know what i mean so um instead of me rambling why don't you let the folks know if they have, if they don't know anything about you let them know who you are what you do what you collect all that good stuff. Yeah, uh, I started in this hobby collecting Marvel Legends. Well, the photography part. I've been collecting my whole life, basically. Mainly, it was Marvel Universe back when that was popping. Uh, I loved Marvel Universe. I mean, they were like 10 bucks. I was a kid. The you couldn't do any wrong. So um, I had started getting into 112th uh, kind of when I was in, I want to say, middle school. And then... Uh, about like mid teens, I, I started shooting. I got on Instagram and um, I 
joined the ACBA group. And so I've just been shooting for seven years now, I want to say. Um, and I've just been trying to get better every time I take a pic of anything. Um, everybody talks about my lighting, which is, you know, everyone's favorite thing, but I, I really just try and capture characters. Um, yeah. That's just kind of my, my favorite thing to try and do emotion characters and and yeah the, the lighting comes after that pretty much but uh yeah i just i'm just trying to do my best with with photos and uh people have enjoyed that journey and I, i've been very grateful um you know meeting you guys and, and others uh finn aiden on instagram and other people so mm -hmm. yeah it's it i'm just taking photos and having fun and people are just kind of watching and see what i do and I'm thankful that people have been enjoying it because it has been uh, frustrating at times. <laughs> some of these photos, I can definitely say that. But uh, yeah, my light just came on randomly. But yeah, I'm just taking pictures whenever I can and then a little bit of weathering more recently. Dude, you but, truly yeah. are the king of lighting. It just... <laughs> yeah, right when I mentioned it, split. The, the heavens just dropped some, some lovely luminescence on me. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, is there is there anything outside of uh, toy photography that you do in terms of like hobbies, anything sort of creative outside of this? Um, I really enjoy writing. I, I did uh, quite a bit of that on Instagram. Um, I had a had a storyline that I've uh, been planning to do for about three, four years now about Dr. Doom. Uh, some things have derailed the progress of that, <laughs> I will say, um, but it, it will still happen. So I, I really enjoy writing. I want to become a filmmaker. Yes. Um, I have a large passion for film. Ever since I saw your Mother's Day video, I really wanted <laughs> to make one. Oh, I'm, man. I'm so joking. It was before okay. that. But that did help. That, that was a, <laughs> that, that did encourage me to, to continue <laughs> down you know, this path. Well, Mother's Day is coming up. You know, I realized that video was made three years ago, dude. You got to make a new one. I know. I have I have all this fancy. You can't keep reposting the same one. You know, <laughs> I know you. I know you just got to repost it. It was make good, a new one. Come on. It, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I got, you're right. I got to get back into it. I got to. I gotta figure it out. So right. Maybe you can help me out with something. So, I, hey, if you need it, I, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Well, hey, if you guys don't mind, uh, before we get too much further, let's see uh, who came out in the live, see who's in the chat tonight, and say what's up to a few people. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I, I got a little cold going on, so if I sound sinusy, it's not fake; it's all real. Um, <clears throat> all right, first in here, what's up, bearded? Let's go. Yo, Dom in the house. What's going on, Dom? Dark G, what's going on? Booyah. Cerebral Deep in the house. What's going on, Cerebral? Wing or lose? What's going on, dude? Let's see who else. Cap, Cap lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cap lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing uh, for you guys tonight. I know you guys, uh, if you want it, Here's another little teaser for every live that we do. I'm going to just do a, a little sweet little discount over on for the Wall XD over on High School Creations uh, website. So if you guys are interested in Wall XD, go check it out. Tonight only, if you use the promo code interviews, you'll get 30% off your entire purchase uh, of Wall XD. So check that out. Uh, cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, coming out and uh, doing this a first couple people. with it. I might have. I. Like I said, I, I got a little cold going on. And I got, I, I got you. We got, we got winger losing the house. Matt Logic forty four, the homie Cerebral Deep. What's up, man? Where you been? What's up, Cerebral? Oh, yeah, and then. Believe my brother. I think that's it. I think we're good. I refuse to acknowledge Cap lives. <laughs> <laughs> there is there beef that we don't know about. <laughs> There's always beef. <laughs> yeah, if you guys that later on. <laughs> If you guys in the chat have any questions, you know, put them out there. We'll bookmark them and we'll come back to them if we don't get them right away. Cool. Um, <clears throat> you know what? what? Why don't we do this, Mike? Can we pull up uh, Alex's um, his Instagram? Yeah, let's do that. No, y'all don't want to see that. Oh, come hey, stop! Hey. You're, you're like. You are the most like I don't even know how to say. Is it humble or are you just like messing with us? Like you, you know. I just, 
I, you know, am highly critical of myself as you both are, you know, as creatives are. So, you know. Oh yeah. Man, look at that. I, I, love, I love your grid, dude. It's so consistent. And I, I, I wish it's like, I imagine like your room is very organized. <laughs> is it not? Oh, my mom would disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> dude, this is just, uh, it, your grid is so clean, man. It's like you're I very disciplined it. in only putting up essentially your art, right? Which is very like for, I gotta say for somebody with OCD, it's very satisfying. To see. <laughs> um, and it's something that I wanted to do for mine, but now I just got a bunch of stuff up there. I might I might clean it up one day. Um, yeah, I, I kind of got into the habit of cleaning it up just because I you know a lot of the other stuff that I kind of am putting up on there is like giveaways. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, eventually you got to get rid of those. I did have one of your giveaways up for like a few years. I think. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Oh. Was it the uh, uh, the three A? It was a three A something. Yeah, I forget yeah, what it was oh at this point. Yeah. I had that up for a long time. I remember uh, Finn Aiden on Instagram. He commented like, "Bro, delete this." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but, "The figure's long gone." I'm I'm happy to break up the uh, the grid with the uh, with the build post. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think I'll keep that one up. Yeah, it fits in there. It fits in there. Yeah, but I'm, there, I'm actually really passionate about making the grid look nice just because I, I don't know. I, when I, when I go to people's Instagrams, I, I look at their presentation of everything. Uh, so that's just kind of one thing that I, I do intentionally kind of work on that, uh, especially making sure that there's not too many of the same tone mm -hmm. when you're kind of scrolling. You know, like it's all cool tones. It's all warm tones. You know, I kind of want it to to mix. Um, I was very excited recently to do more colors. Um, you know, like more solid colors, purples and greens and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely do work on that, Mario. So, thank you for thank you for noticing. Oh, you know, it's it's like a uh, it's like a portfolio. You know, what I right? Mean? And that's yeah. um, I like I and I'm just comparing to like mine. Like if you. You'd have to go searching for like the the toy photography that I did. You know, it's all over the place. Well, that might be because of recency. That might not. <laughs> <laughs> that might be because it was five years ago. <laughs> oh, correction, <laughs> one year ago. Oh, okay, one. No, no, one. Actually, actually, I did take a shot this year. One, only one shot this year. Oh no. Uh, uh, he said, "Peace out." <laughs> he's like done, and he's in and out. Just like that. Um, I we guess we wait for him talk about his work, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do have a lot of questions about him setting his stuff up in his diorama. I mean, look at this. This looks like a real scene. Like, he, like, this is, is dope. He, he so gets, good. yeah, these figures are definitely encompassed or, or, you know, completely, you know, within their element. I mean, look at that. It's, it's a combination of things to make it look this good. You know, just like, look at that natural posing. Right. You know. Couple with the light, the silhouette lighting. Bro, I can't wait till he gets back because I gotta, I, you know, I'm not really a fan of the Dutch angle. <laughs> and he throws <laughs> it in there all the time. <laughs> you know, if you can use it though, like some people overdo it, but in mm -hmm. like, I think this is an example of it, right? It's subtle enough but it looks yeah. great yeah no no i i agree it it has its time and place um you know i think some some people might use it as a crutch but like for this it, it works you know it's not it's not too much um yeah that's good too so good I'm, uh, he's texting me right now that may have been the shortest interview segment ever Dude, look at this. Oh, what am I doing? What what have I done wrong? Are you sleeping on Alex? I am. I guess so. You know what? I want to see if he can get if he'll like give away some of his like uh, post editing secrets. Ooh, look, dude, that, that that one when he showed me that. That's so sick. Does he do behind the scenes? Yeah, they're on his stories though. You know, and it's usually just like the 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 actual setup, but not setting up you know 
Yeah, these got to be some hella setups, though. I mean, look how deep this goes back. Yeah. Yeah, that's another... Um... I mean, these aren't Digiramas. No. Or they might no. be in the very back, but... No, that's not. I, I think Alex might be anti-Digirama. For so I don't know why that's that's ringing a bell, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and save that interview question. He's got um, is he back? Is he? No. Oh, there yeah, he is. He is. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got you. Okay, got my tech person to help me. I did not hear anything that was being said. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, man. I'm sure your ears are burning because Mike was over here falling in his chair, just admiring your coach. <laughs> <dude. laughs> so I, I legit didn't hear anything. Uh, it's, it's all good. Highly unprofessional. Dude, have you not seen the show? That's how we roll, baby. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, he. we were just admiring your, your work here. And um, Mike said uh, it's all actual dioramas and no digirama. And I, I'm like, I think Alex is anti-digirama. I... I'm not anti Like you're talking like using a monitor. <laughs> yeah. I am not at all. I, I want to use one. I just don't have one. So, oh, okay. Okay. I, 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 think one if, I think if you saw me use one, um, you would know because it would be like, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? you know, yeah. You, you can't be anti because you're the one that helped me with like blending the background for right. my did you wrong. Yeah. You had the contrast all wrong and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that that felt like a dig, but I was like, how does he not notice this? Come on, man. No, but you know what? I I appreciate you being my soundboard because I did not notice it until I like cranked up uh, the shadows and like I'm like, oh my god, it made a huge difference. You know what I mean? And you yeah. can only see it like after you do the comparison, you know. So and it, I think. You know, that's another recommendation I would tell anybody, you know, taking photos, have your soundboard, have that one person that'll keep it real with you and not be like, oh, that's dope. That's dope. No, yes, right. one. you know, so. Yeah, the, the minute everybody is saying yes to you is the minute that you should quit. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. If, if if you don't have any room for improvement in anyone's eyes, then you're probably done. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I th it's a good thing when someone notices something and you're able to adjust and, and that keeps happening, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's how like Mike and I will go back and forth like that too. You know, I'm like, uh, maybe you could improve on this or have you tried that? Um, and it's just to help make the best possible, you know, outcome or result. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, dude, it, Mike asked, or Mike, you got questions? I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm like starstruck over here. We're just leaving Mike out, man. He's just you know, sitting I'm there. Sorry, just... man. I'm just staring at these pictures, and first of all, I had to go through and make sure I liked them all because they're so good. But the depth of your pictures, like how, what does your setups look like, or the length of your setups, like th they seem um, so detailed and deep. I do have, so I have like this desk. And I have a card table kind of set up in front. So I do have a whole lot of space. I don't tend to use it much for backgrounds unless I have this uh, warehouse dial. So um, if I have that, then I kind of have to use all that space. But for a shot like this, it's not a whole lot. I mean, it's all relative, really. I'm not sure what, you know. I could be using a ton of space compared to someone else. But to me, it's, it's not as much as I actually have. Um, a lot of that is just uh, the aperture and uh, steam is what I kind of use in the background. Like this shot, for example, the, you know, the, the atmosphere is, is a steamer, like for your clothes, you know, your wrinkles out. I just kind of spray that in front of the lights. So um, it's kind of like, the, it's a little bit of an illusion of depth. It's not really um, as far back as you may think. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of a lot of things working together at the same time to create that depth of field. You you always have foreground elements, background elements, and then your your fo focus is so tight. Like, what what do you typically hover at? Like two point eight to three point two. Two point eight and three and three point two are kind of my main ones. I will go to about three point two if I have multiple people mm -hmm. um, in frame. Uh, primarily it's 2.8 or lower if it's just a single character like this one. I believe this one was 2.5, if I remember correctly. Um, 
all of my behind the scenes are in my highlights. Oh, okay. so, um, I believe there's one for this one up there. So you might be able to see my settings. Sometimes I have to work on it. Sometimes I kind of uh, will forget to show the settings in the video. Some people have messaged me like, yo, what was the, what was the f-stop? And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I oh, was too busy like showing the image yeah. on the camera. But yeah, um, we, we got to check out some of those highlights. I, I do remember one time I had su suggested to Alex, I'm like, why don't you crank that up to like F14? <laughs> and he left me on red. And I'm talking for like a couple of weeks. I did not leave you on red. I responded. <laughs> so actually, you know, I I have experimented um, with uh, with different f stops. The only issue is a lot of what you're seeing in the photo is an illusion, mm -hmm. and the set the illusion breaks if you see more of the set if more of the set is in focus if there's more detail in the background right. a lot of it is mishmashed parts mm -hmm. it's you know one wall here and one wall there and one light here so like for example that light spot behind uh black panther that's just a straight up light right there i got you yeah you are um just a diorama kit basher and i think the only other person that might rival you is darius in the diorama kit like the, when i think about you and your photos and your setup and what you have like you get a ton of mileage with what you got you know what i mean yeah um, it was it, it, a lot of it was being forced to um when i only had a couple walls you know years ago i, I had to figure out how do i make the same wall look slightly different so a lot of that was just unintentional practice really mm-hmm no, that I mean, it's a good skill set too. You know, you can see, you know, what's in your arsenal and be like, okay, this will work. I remember you were having um, a challenge with trying to shoot like Star Wars figures because I think most of the stuff you have, I, I don't even know if you have any Star Wars dioramas. I do not. I have a couple props uh, from my man, A1 Groundwalker on Instagram. Uh, but other than that, no, I'm using a myriad of different things. Mm hmm um can you run through your dioramas and what you have so um deep breath <laughs> yeah it, it was, it's mainly just trying to think of the ones that i uh, kind of use so for the longest time i was using extreme sets you know the flat cardboard thing okay um i haven't used those in quite a long time um but, but I did use those for a while. If you kind of scroll down on my feed, you'll see it. Um, for, for this sh shot, like the zombie cap or the spider noir things, um, I got a warehouse dio from Tom Tastic on Instagram, Tom Bud. Um, it has an exterior and an interior. So it's a double sided walls and it can form a single building um, interior and exterior. And then I can just take the walls out and use different things. So that's the main thing I've been using the past couple of years because that was the big dio that i wanted i wanted something much bigger and much more substantial and give me more options mm -hmm. um and then besides that i have this quite small outdoor dio um it was from a uh dial maker named toyographer i believe he passed away a few years back mm -hmm. um he made that and my first dial which was in a like an apartment dio it's kind of like this beige wall um one of my Actually, two of my blind cowboy shots use that wall. Um, one where he's looking out a window, and then there's um, another one where he uh, the blindfold is down and he's holding his revolver up. Um, yeah. So I use that wall. And then the other two that I have are just singular walls. They're kind of like, I want to say monitor length, but taller. I'm not sure the exact dimensions, uh, but one of them is just two windows. Um, I haven't used that one in a little while. And then the last one is a castle window. Um, both of those walls are from uh, Shakem78. Uh, he goes by Kodak Nick now on Instagram. Um, he, he made those for me just because he knew I needed some stuff and he was willing to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the fences, this fence in particular is from Art With Toys on Instagram. Uh, he also made the Venom that's in the shot. <laughs> uh, and then I have another fence that came with the warehouse dial. So that's pretty much all of the legitimate dios that I use. And then I just use the pieces from various things for, yeah. uh, for shots. 
Do you uh do you sell any of your prints of your photography? I do not. I've thought about it. Um and I know people would want them, but I just haven't really gotten around to to doing any of that. Yeah, yeah. I was asking for myself actually, but yeah, these are dope. <laughs> I would love to like I love Venom and this is an awesome shot. I actually yeah, I mean, I, I'll definitely uh, consider doing it more cuz a lot of people have asked me um, believe it or not, about this shot in particular. So I think this is a popular one. So yeah, yeah I just ha I'd have to gauge which ones people would want most. Like I'm sure people would want the Mythic Legion skeleton, um, that Darth Vader one, perhaps. Vader one is so yeah. good, man. Thank you. And and this is another one that it's it's the illusion. Those are three lights, and that's just steam. So if if there was more focus in the background, you would see that it's yeah. it's three yeah. lights. So a lot of it is just, I, I have to use the camera to, to sell the illusion. So that's why I'm a little bit apprehensive about uh, yeah. kind of changing my f-stop a little bit. I, I would like to at some point. Um, I think I would just, I would need to get a new dial, wink, wink, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and just use it like as its base and then try that, I think. Because yeah. I actually went straight to experimenting with uh, with the warehouse dial, which is the most recent one. Yeah. And I, I don't think like going to a bigger f-stop is necessarily something that you would need. I mean, this is clearly your style. You know what I mean? And I think this is why people love it so much, right? I think if you were to go, like it, it would have to fit within, like you said, like the scenery, the the diorama setup, right? To, to crank that up. Um, right. And you probably have to have like a lot of, subjects or something in the, like a lot that would need to be in focus um what i had an idea though you could create a book you have enough material here to do oh, just yeah, like an art do. book and then since you're a writer you could just write like your thoughts when creating if you can remember you know what you were going through yeah that, you that's actually it. i hadn't even thought about that 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 might be a good idea a, a book would probably be better and probably much easier to manage than just individual prints or anything like that. Hey, everybody, you get everything. For well, me. And you could break it up in seasons, too. That so is not, true. Not to get it on the, the photo thing, but you can actually just dump your digitals into something like Printful, and then people go select, and they cost you nothing, and you don't have to do anything. They print it, they send it out, and all you do is make like a percentage. Yeah, that's passive uh, income. Yeah, passive as hell. I, you put I'll everything out there, and people that. can just go pick it up um yeah so i i heard you maybe you mentioned this and i'm just tone deaf or something but you're also a writer i wanted to ask about your photography background because obviously you know you're not just shooting toys it seems like you started from somewhere else we'd we'll love to hear about that and how you got into it well actually i did just kind of start with toys i um you know i was i i came into the hobby at i want to say 15 16 so i i wasn't really doing anything much i've done some uh, you know, corporate and uh, senior photos and things like that since, but it started with the toys. Um, I was primarily shooting with my phone um, when I first started. And then uh, a gentleman, uh, Justin Pierce on Instagram, he sent me uh, his old camera, his old Canon camera. And so I started using that for the longest time. The most recent shots actually um, has just been a new camera. So I think if you go back to 2021, it's still the old camera. So I was using the old camera for, for quite a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't really have any proper training or anything. I've just been shooting toys. I, I, I haven't really um, ventured into any other forms of photography very seriously yet. I wanted to, there's just been a lot happening. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't do much besides the besides the hobby stuff. Yeah. Do you even want to like get into other types of photography? I do because okay. I, I want to do film, so I kind of view all of it as practice. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like to work with more, you know, humans, <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of plastic. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's just been timing, just trying to figure out when's the right time to kind of do it. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned, you, oh, sorry. I, go no, ahead. go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, you mentioned film. And, you, I, you know, I heard writer. Are you trying to do, like, your own uh, film and writing and, you know, be a uh, producer or director as well? Or I, I really want to direct and write. Uh -huh. um, 
which in whichever order i i don't necessarily need to do one or the other or both at the same time right. um i'm just i my grandfather um he loves movies and so since i was young i was always just kind of seeing him enjoy movies and I'm, I'm, we're talking about black and white like westerns we're not <laughs> we're not talking anything truly entertaining <laughs> anymore but you know he was very passionate about you know humphrey bogart and all these other people and uh, he would just always tell me about this stuff. And um, when I was younger, I always wanted to be like the characters in the movie. So I, I would look at my mom and I'd say, Mom, I want to be a cop. She's like, no, you don't want to be a cop. Mom, I want to be a pirate. You don't want to be a pirate. <laughs> uh, and and when, when she kept telling me that, I realized, no, I want to entertain. I want to make these characters. I want to be able to, to kind of show these different lifestyles and, and different things. So... Yeah. Film has kind of just been the ultimate goal for me, and um, toy photography was just kind of a way to get some of that creativity out. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really want to direct. I, I, I love Spielberg movies. I love Nolan movies. I really want to do that stuff. TV as well. I just, I have a desire to create entertaining things and create stuff that I want to watch, and that that goes into the toy photography as well. I'm, I want to make stuff that that. I would scroll on Instagram and go, oh, that looks good. Right. I haven't okay. quite done that yet <laughs> but, for, for myself, but yeah. So I definitely want to direct and, and, and write. Yeah. Dude, that would be cool awesome. to see like a, uh, like a photo series, like take your own, you know, OC and then just have them go through like, I don't know, different scenarios through, you know, through your photography. That'd be cool. Yeah, I wanted to do that with a uh, rude boy, but then you sent uh, too many other people rude boy, so I, I, could, I couldn't claim that as my own thing. All right, you know what? Uh, we got to. I'll figure out a new uh, character for you. <laughs> An A and R only character, and yeah, then, then we can yeah, roll yeah. on that. I'll sculpt something for you. I'll yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Nice. Uh, so, have you done any uh, any film or anything that's that's out there on Instagram or anywhere else? Nope. Um, the main project that I was trying to do wasn't film. It was actually kind of writing a uh, kind of like a fan story about Dr. Doom. It was called Doom World. Mm -hmm. um, I was sending some of it to Mario, I think, during the pandemic or something. Um, I, I really wanted to do a massive story and picture thing on Instagram. That's just kind of like one of my goals. Um, Years ago, I did like a Moon Knight story. Like I put a post and then here's the story and people kind of followed that. I mean, that was, I think that was like 2017 or something like that. Um, but I've always wanted to do something like that on a bigger scale. So the writing is kind of like a different version of an outlet for me. Like, okay, let me write a story, see how people respond, excuse me, to it. And, uh, just kind of go from there. So I haven't really started in the filming place yet, just because as much as I love using cameras, I'm terrible at knowledge of cameras. <laughs> I don't, I actually don't know much about cameras and, and lenses and stuff. So I want to kind of uh, get more knowledge about that before I really kind of go high gear into uh, filming anything. Have you messed around with your camera and like the video settings and stuff? Or I have used the video for, uh, you know, showing off my weathering or anything like that but i haven't i haven't really messed with it yet just because i've been i've been kind of focused on the figure stuff so to yeah. speak yeah so yeah. i've just been trying to improve there mm -hmm. uh just really quick about doom world yes you did send me um some of your work and i think people know that i i am no reader i probably <laughs> read two books my entire life and i was hooked man. oh that explains it <laughs> <laughs> It took me a year to read that passage. <laughs> no, but um, I it, it it's it's good, and I do remember when I was reading it, I felt like I was there, man. And thank you, I appreciate and, that. And I, I do remember you were saying like I would like to shoot this, you know. So I kept thinking how this would translate into either photography or film, and I could, I mean, it, it's it's such a good story, man. So I, I, I appreciate hope it. More of it, dude. Yes, I, a lot of things have happened kind of in between writing it. Like I started writing it during the pandemic, well, right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like the 
best time to do it and the worst time to do it at the same time. There was just, there was a lot of things happening and not happening at the same time. So um, mm -hmm. a lot has happened since then that has kind of derailed some of the process, but I do know that it'll be better than it originally was going to be the more time kind of passes. But I, I really want that to be my, my magnum opus. I really want to try and, and do something that no one else has really done in the hobby. That's yeah. just kind of my goal. So that's, that's been the thing that I've been most serious about when I'm doing it, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I appreciate that you liked it and, and, and you enjoyed it, especially as a, someone that's not a non-reader, because, yeah. you know, those are the people that you really want to write for. You want people that don't read to, to mm -hmm. be really into it. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you left me on a cliffhanger and I was like, damn, I, I need more. I probably did. Yeah, I think I know which part I sent you to. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yo, what's up, Kit Bash? Um, so you're, what's the, uh, when's the next set of pictures that we can expect? Or are sometime, you waiting on something from someone? <laughs> sometime within the year. Okay. And I may be waiting for a, a person that really enjoys burgers to, uh, <laughs> To, to maybe further collaborate with me on something. I, you know what? I need to. I need to get Mike in on this too because I, I I need some help. Um, I'm full of ideas, but Mike is the one that kind of does like he just follows through. Like I'm. I don't know if we're we're similar in that sense where I kind of just overthink before I just do. Mike is like he just goes. He just starts carving and stuff, right? So Mike, I'm gonna have to pull you in into, into this project. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I could talk you through to done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny uh, is I was going to ask Mike at first. Ooh, oh, okay. But, <laughs> but then I thought, no, I need to push Mario. I need, yeah. I need to get him going with something crazy. Yeah. So, and that's another thing that I wanted to talk to you about, right? So we, like, we build dioramas with the photographer in mind and that's that's a whole challenge in itself because we know this thing has to be somewhat mo modular it has to break down for either storage you want to be able to get or, or have the photographer like get mul multiple uses and angles out of this right so um what do you like what do you look for in a diet like if you were going to commission somebody like what are some of the must-haves uh, that would work for you and your photography? Well, uh, the big thing is making sure that the wall stands up. Um, <laughs> that That is actually a legit problem that I had with my older uh, stuff when I would just use a single wall is that I would have to prop it up on a light, but then, you know, now one of my lights I can't use. So yeah. now I have to figure out how to use a different light. So um, definitely making sure that it can stand, you know, by itself is a really good thing to me because when it falls over, I, I go absolutely ballistic and it's uh, not fun. Um, but the other thing is definitely modular. It's being able to have multiple cab lives is not going to get a response from me. <laughs> He's not going to get a response from me. Um, modular is definitely the, the big thing to me um, because of using a single wall so many times for so many years. Um, I was like, what if, the other side with something else what if i could take it apart what if i could you know combine it in a different way like the uh ubiquitous ubiquitous stuff yeah, um yeah. maybe not you know with hard to open tabs and yeah. whatnot but something that can be multiple things i think mm -hmm. is um very good and obviously that's going to be very challenging as a as a dial maker but um th that is the, like a big thing to me is like no I, when i buy this I want to be able to use it and it's not just one thing and I don't, you know, use it all up in 10 photos. I want to be able to go, oh, it's a rooftop, it's a house, it's a bar, it's an alley, you know, whatever. Yeah. I think that's one of the best things that the dial makers can do for a photographer because you can go, okay, I can do whatever I want with this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that, that definitely is a chance. Oh, windows too. Windows for you. Right? Windows, it, windows, windows windows mm -hmm. wind 
like as many windows as possible <laughs> is probably the best thing. Windows are the toy photography messiah. Windows are all of our salvation. Windows, yes, Mike. Windows. And, and, and why is that, Alex? Why windows? Because lights, man. Because you can put a light behind all of the windows mm -hmm. and it looks good. You know, if it was just a solid three walls or whatever, I'm not going to say four because then how do you shoot it? You know, I then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> no, uh, you know, getting as much light in as possible is going to look great. And, you know, someone like me who uses steam or anyone that uses, you know, a can of aerosol or whatever, it just looks great. I, I like using light, focused light in the background. Uh, I, I told you before, Mario, I kind of call them light pockets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no. And it, it also creates, it, it breaks up the background too and creates more like depth. You know what I mean? Right. There, there have been so many times and I, I think... As like you know, when you start off, everybody throws their figures up against a wall, right? There's no separation, and right. you know you need like if you're gonna do that, you need something in the background to to, to switch it up. But uh, but yeah, especially for you, man, with like you're the master manipulator of, of light, you know. So we we got to get you, we got to get more windows for Alex. Right. And doorways. Don't forget doorways. Doorways with working doors is the greatest thing on planet earth oh that's mike's thing right there my none of my Dude, doors work. every door should work i don't yeah I every door should work you need people you know coming through it closing it breaking it down whatever doorways windows if i could just get a dial full of just endless doorways and windows that'd be great monsters inc dial it's just a whole bunch of doors yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude we can just get, get you like just a set of walls and you can make your own uh uh diorama see that's the thing with me i have uh what i like to call selective patience and uh <laughs> with with dial making um when i've thought about it i realized i don't have the patience in the selection for that so um yeah i also with me i want i want to put my best foot forward with everything and so in contrast to dios, I mean, in contrast to weathering, dios, I want it to look immaculate. I want it to look as good as it possibly can. So if I'm just trying for the first time to make the dio, I'm probably not going to shoot on it. And then what was the point? Because I'm not I'm not really willing to shoot on something that's practiced on at, at this point, so to speak. With weathering, it's easier to get away with you know, oh, it's just a black wash. Like anyone can do a black wash. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really not that hard to do that. It's really not hard to do some dry brushing. So when I was learning how to do that, it wasn't, you know, messing with me mentally trying to shoot. Oh no, I've, this is the first figure I've ever weathered. You know, it, it wasn't like that. So dios is like a whole different category for me. I, I'll pay the professionals to do that. I, have you, have <laughs> you tried making a dial? I have very... Um, I haven't on any large scale. It's been very small stuff, and it didn't turn out very great. <laughs> so <laughs> we got we got to find those. We got to find these pictures <laughs> if they exist. <laughs> <laughs> they are long gone. Don't, don't worry about them. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you do customize some figures in too? Yes, I, I do. I brought some um, here if you guys want to see them. Yeah. My favorite thing to paint in the whole world is mythic legions this is oh man i don't know if the focus is gonna agree with me here but this is a gladiator i did uh put some blood on him i don't think this focus is gonna you gotta nice do one of these <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go like uh, there you go yeah, there i don't go. know there there you go. okay there you go yeah we see it yeah. oh you like bladder, exactly. yeah yeah, I mean, he was uh, kind of like blue gray, so I kind of put this blue on him and the gold, and then I put all this blood on him. It's on the back too. Um, but mythic lesions are the best thing to paint. They they take paint very well. Um, if you get a 
army builder, one of the legion builders, I believe they call them. Um, they're like pretty bare, so you can just kind of do whatever you want with them. Uh, here's a Templar. I did. Nice. Uh, put some gold on them, you know, color separation, dirt. <laughs> of course, this Russia. I desperately want to move this one light. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I love weathering. I use these like Arteza paints. Not okay. sure if that's the best thing to use. I just kind of do whatever I do. Is that you know acrylic? I mean? Yeah, it's, it's acrylic. This is just a gray. Um, but yeah, I, I just kind of use what's available to me and what's cheap, and then I just kind of go about it like that. It may not be the best thing to do, <laughs> but it's kind of what I do. At the uh, end of the day, it looks good, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're able to get the results. This is a uh, G.I. Joe Dusty. I wanted him to actually look sandy and not yellow, yeah. which was a weird choice to me. This is a uh, Gridiron Studios set. Um, yeah, I just have other nights and stuff that I've done. Uh, this one, I wanted him to look shinier. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to focus. But um, yeah, I just... I started getting into it because of um, Art with Toys on Instagram. Uh, he did that Venom for me and then some other things. And uh, it was really inspiring to me to see his process and it was quite easy. So I was like, let me let me see if I can do this. I looked at a video on uh, doing a, a black wash um, and that was really simple to me. So I did that and then I did some dry brushing and then slowly it just, it started to make more sense to me, kind of like photos, you know, when you kind of start doing it, you're like, oh, this isn't as hard as it as it appears to be. Um, so I just kind of was doing it more and more and more and more and more. And then I just kind of I've fallen in love with it. Uh, skeleton I did made him all bloody. Is that the one that you use in that shot with the cobwebs? No, this is a this is a newer one. Uh, okay. The one that I used uh, for the cobwebs. Uh, isn't as detailed as this. It was just kind of just gold and then some blood on them. This one is kind of newer. Um, I got this off BBTS. For the blood, are you, what are you using for the blood? So um, I have like this Arteza like set. Mm -hmm. um, it was originally someone else's in the house that I may have borrowed <laughs> permanently. <laughs> but, um, so, they they have some reds but the reds come off a little too pink to me so i just mix it with some like really orangey browns and then uh i use you recommended like some chalks to me um so i kind of yeah. use some of that mix it with some water and then just uh paint that on the figure and it it looks good enough to me i would like to get some like i believe it's blood for the blood god from uh citadel yeah. um, i would like to use yeah. some of that because i think that would look more convincing but i'm just kind of using what i got from yeah. someone <laughs> yeah, there there's some uh, some actual like they look like blood from Citadel or Vallejo or or, mm -hmm. or other pink. But I remember when I the first time I bloodied up a figure, it was a I think it was a Wolverine and a saber tooth, and you told me to use food dye. I'm like, I don't want to ruin my figure. Like it'll wash right off. I'm like, no, it won't. I'm like, all right, if you ruin this, it's on you. <laughs> right. And it worked. You know, just for like the shot, and then just run under some water, washes right out. Mm -hmm. I, I yep. didn't know that. It was, and I yeah, still, I, I use that for photos. Uh, I believe it's the Ultron photo on my Instagram was the last time I used it. The most recent time I used it. Um, I have to get some more, uh, I think. But yeah, I I figured that out a long time ago. Back when I was like shooting in my backyard, I had a spray bottle. I put some water in it, some food dye, and I just sprayed them. And I was like, "Oh, this works!" And it came right off. So I've been yeah. doing that for for years. Yeah, yeah, that was an awesome find. <clears throat> what about um, you? Weather some uh, some vehicles too, huh? I did. I totally forgot to bring one of those. Um, yeah, I did a bat cycle. McFarlane bat cycle I made it blacker because it was like bluish gray and I was like yeah. I know that that's how it looked in um white knight uh but I just kind of wanted something that looked black so I I painted it black and then I did some dirt on it. the the video of it should be in my highlights um and then I did a G.I. Joe ram cycle I made that kind of all muddy 
Mm -hmm. um, those are the only two I've done so far for myself. I did another Ram cycle for a man, Chad Kinsler on uh, Instagram, and uh, he had a moped that I did because a certain someone didn't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chad. <laughs> sorry, Chad. <laughs> yeah, Chad had to send it to me to finish what Mario started. <laughs> it even started. I just had it in my hand for months. <laughs> Michael looks so disappointed right now. <laughs> <laughs> the king of procrastination here <laughs> right oh man it's just you know you got so many ideas and you want to do them all and then you end, then up, you doing end up doing none on. yeah yeah <laughs> i gotta get better with that you let perfection get in the way yeah I know, I know machu's always saying you know, done is better than perfect and uh you know so but i you guys know how to roll. I'll smash something if I if I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually I powered through game. something the other day, and I I hate it, but I finished it. And I, I still hate it, so <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, it's not something you showed me earlier. It is. I, what? I, yeah. Uh, I see, don't... Mario, I hate everything, but I still end up posting it. You so think about that. Okay, let me ask you this then: mm -hmm. Is there a photo? that you what's your favorite photo you absolutely love there's got to be one i'm okay with the spider noir on in the window one i'm okay with that one Good, man I, I'm, I'm all right with that like it's you know that was it's it's close to my original imagination so is that, that the problem hard. where you visualize something in your head and then when you see it, it's not? That's about 85% the problem. The other the other portion of the problem is um, I'll, I'll be sitting there for hours and then nothing happens. <laughs> so that's the other problem with shooting. It's like, oh, God, I've been in here for four hours and I have no photos. Um, but 85% of it, yes, it's. I, I had an image in my mind. Okay, what do I want to do? You know, and I may have had the image in my mind for maybe all of thirty minutes, but mm -hmm. um, I had it, and then I try and do it, and I'm like, okay, well, this doesn't uh, quite look like that, but sure, everyone else likes it, so <laughs> I guess I'll I guess I'll roll with it. But yeah, if if I could capture um, my imagination of what the photo could look like then I probably wouldn't shoot much because then I'd be done. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm constantly searching for a uh, level um, that I hope I actually don't reach because if I reach that level, then there's nowhere else to go. So yeah, yeah that's kind of the constant struggle. I, I'm looking for a finish line that I hope doesn't exist with, with, with my photos. So as I try to continue to get better, I'm constantly more and more disappointed with how the photo looks. Is is there a finish line with art, though? Do you think? The, I think that there could be for an individual artist. I think you could go, okay, this is as good as I can possibly take this photo. A photo, even. Um, this is the best project that I could possibly put out, and then I can move on to something else. I kind of do see a finish line with this hobby um i just don't know where it is i i want to put out something i'm like i'm completely satisfied with this and then i think that would be that would kind of be it for me the, the minute you're satisfied i think it, it, if you're trying to get better is the minute that you're just done you, you have nowhere else to go you have nothing else to do so i agree i think i think once you start making <laughs> films directing and writing this might take a backseat to that. <laughs> you know? Hopefully before then, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I've, I've reached that, that level where I, where I can be, where I can be happy. I'm not constantly like, Oh my God, where is it? Where's the idea <laughs> that's going to free me from this cage? <laughs> oh man. Um, Mike, can we, can we look at some of his, uh, well, hold on. My favorite shot mm -hmm. that Magneto shot. I, I, <laughs> I wonder know. why. I wonder why it was posted. What theme it was for? It's lower, Mike. It, was that was that the seven nine six level up? Oh, was it? Was it? I. No, I it, was. it was. It was. Oh wow! Good memory. 
Mm-hmm. That, that Iron Man shot where he's taken off too. Holy crap. Oh, right at it. Right now, that I actually oh, bit from, uh, from Al Chang. Uh, did you? Toy okay. Soldier on Instagram. Um, that was on my show. Mike, you passed it. Yeah, you got to go up. Oh, wait. Which one am I looking for now? <laughs> it's the one the window. Orange yeah. window. Right chest there. Oh, man, dude. Yeah. It's so good. Yes, everyone wants to keep naming the... Uh, the technique I used after me, but I refuse. I was not the first person to do it. Um, that is clear packaging plastic that's blue tacked to his hand, and uh, the light behind it just makes it disappear. Yeah, you just wow. Well, the bokeh, and it's like it's blown right. out, right? Yeah, but I have seen people use higher f stops, and uh, it still disappears. Really? Where yeah, where were you at on this one? I think that was 3.5 really wow yeah it's just it's framed perfectly in the window you know what i mean like th- there is yeah. nothing done on accident in alex's photos at least i i don't think i think everything is done with purpose you know the entire cobweb shot was an accident i will say that <laughs> what? don't ruin that for me ben <laughs> no, I mean, it wasn't a total accident. I was trying to take a photo, and the way that it looks was an accident. Oh. That, that photo nearly killed me. I almost quit. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, at the time, I was trying to get a whole bunch of shots done because uh, I had some I had some stuff going on at the time, some, like, uh, health stuff. So I wanted to get a whole bunch of shots done. And, uh, you know, I don't have any real dials for the Mythic Legion stuff, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I was really struggling that day to get anything. And that, I mean, that was multiple days that, that one picture is multiple days of me trying to get something. I had him kneeling. I had different angles. I had, you know, different things. I had cobwebs. I didn't have cobwebs. I did a whole bunch of different stuff. I was, I really wanted to capture the vibe that the photo gives off, but it wasn't always this. And then eventually I kind of just, it just happened. And I was like, finally, I got something. I was extremely frustrated that I even got anything because it took so long. <laughs> it's a very serious and stressful process for me taking photos. Oh, I, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. I'm sure you've gotten many of my messages. Oh, dude, there, there are some, <laughs> <laughs> there's some times where you'll send something and it, it like the difference is so minute. It's such a small difference. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking for here. I'm just going to go with my gut. And then you're like, you chose incorrectly. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've never said you chose incorrectly. No, no, no. But I think you're you're like, you're in the minority here. It's uh, two two against one right now. I know <laughs> you, you sent it off to, to, to Finn and Aiden as well. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's usually just like the colors that are, that you play around with, right? Yeah. Is that... And then maybe like the uh, the uh, the crop as well. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this wasn't the original crop at all. Yeah, his knee was more in there. There was you know it was a little bit more off, a little bit more unbalanced. I definitely mess around with that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you do you? I'm sure you do Lightroom or post post editing, right? Lightroom. Lightroom. Okay. Um, any inside information you'd like to share or is that like one of the the secrets that you you keep close to the truth? I, I don't i don't keep any any secrets it's not really okay. it's not that big of a deal <laughs> you know um <laughs> really i it, it's all for the individual photo oh this needs a little bit more contrast oh this needs a little bit less exposure oh this needs vignette oh this needs blah blah mm-hmm. blah 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 this needs less saturation this needs more saturation it just depends on you know what i'm feeling for the photo just to kind of force it to look better than it uh initially does because i hate it um <laughs> you know the entire time i post it people are liking it and commenting and i still hate it um so it's just kind of you know figuring out there hasn't been any photo where an edit has saved it um it the photo itself has kind of been fine i, I haven't needed I haven't needed Lightroom like that where I'm like, oh my God, I need to blast the saturation and do like, I haven't needed it to that extent. Um, there was yeah. one photo of mine that you saved with Lightroom. It was the rude boy on the motorcycle. 
<laughs> what did I and, tell you to do in my room? I forgot. Well, you well one, it was Rude Boy standing next to his motorcycle, looking down the street, and the street was just too clean. And you're like, no, 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 no. You need to dirty it up. You need to add trash and all that. So I redid it. And every time Alex tells me yeah. till I go back, I, I'm like, I took this, I took it down, or you know, <laughs> I mean, like I, I should just know to to leave it up. I always have to fight Mario to go back and just it, add. Really one the fight. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground, it's like, Mario, just add one so it can, bro. It's not that big a deal, bro. <laughs> just add yeah. one. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm glad you did because I I. I posted both pictures and I'm like, it's night and day. Right. And then I, I, you know, was able to make a reel. So I was done and I'm like, I'm happy with this. It was a top down shot. And I think you were okay with it, but you're like, the colors are off. And I'm like, I'm not going back. I'm not. The colors were definitely off, but the shot wasn't bad. You were like, I don't like it. But I'm going to, I'm like, dude, li listen to me. Add trash. No, that sounds crazy, but add trash. Yeah. No, the, uh, but so when, when I took the shot where he's leaning against the bike, there's trash everywhere. There was too much magenta. Mm -hmm. There was magenta on the top right um, and uh, like uh, behind the bike, right? It had nice shine. And I think what you did was you took it in Lightroom and you just manipulated that magenta to like a blue. I might mm -hmm. be getting it backwards, and it. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Completely changed everything, and I'm like, I couldn't see that. I couldn't see what you saw, you know. Um, and that that's talent right there to have the eye, you know. So, um, and and Lightroom is such a powerful tool, right? Just something like that small, and I mean that was a pretty big change, right? To change a color and completely flip it. But man, thank you again for that. That was yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to tell you to just change the light color, but I knew you would probably. I I, 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 I think I did take it down. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you probably did. I was like, oh, okay, let me. It was up do for it. a couple days. It was up for a couple <laughs> right. days. That, that was a big dial piece, right? It was a two by two street, you know? So, I, you know, the kids were eating on like the floor. For a couple days because the table was taken so but that, that's an interesting point that you bring it up because i do think about colors a lot more recently like this shot right here of spider-man for example i've been using colors because i got some ulanzi uh, more recently it took me years to get some um so more recently i've been using more solid colors but i'm always thinking about colors like for example in this shot um you see the the yellow post right there mm -hmm. yeah on the right um, I put that in there because I'm like, there's all this blue, there's all this black. There needs to be something that complements it. And, you know, you look at it, I have a color wheel, you know, complementary colors saved on my phone just to kind of make sure. I'm always thinking about that. Um, Mike, if you go back out and uh, there's a shot of Rorschach, uh, he's by a green building and he's holding a flower. I believe it's lower. Um, he's he's kind of walking. Yeah, the green and purple one on the left. Well, that that one too. But uh, yeah, the it's down on the left. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I see it now. <laughs> there you go. So that one, I was really thinking about it too. Like I, I put a warm light in the windows to complement the purple on the right. I put the yellow right there by the purple, and then I had the green on the wall because he's holding a red flower. You know, so I'm constantly thinking about the props and the lighting and the color of the figure and the vibe of the character. Mm -hmm. So when you sent that original version of it, you know, he has the jacket on with, with the, it's yellow on the jacket, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The, the magenta and the yellow, the tones of them just didn't match properly. So I was like, if this was more blue, yeah. there you have it. You know what I mean? You'd, I, I like to think of stuff that way, especially with, with props more recently, because I'm like, how can I make this stuff stand out in a less obvious way? Right. Um, so that yellow post is kind of a cheat code that I use all the time. I'm like, oh, it's blue. Bam, put that right there. Oh, there's red. Bam, put this right there. Because yeah. it, it, it looks unintentional, but it's very intentional. And I think that's a good way to go about it, because you don't want it to look obvious. You right. don't want someone to look at it and go, oh, he put that in there so he matches that. No, I, I want you to subconsciously know that. Yeah. You know I mean? So yeah. when I saw your photo, it was just that in practice. It was like, okay, 
it, it kind of matches, but I, it shouldn't kind of match. It should completely match. Right. It, um, yeah. And it, it looked, it, it made more sense too, because you can't see what's on the other side of, of, you would just assume like he's in front of some stores or something. So when you change it to blue, it's like, okay, maybe there's like a big screen TV because it's set in like a cyberpunk world, right? And that's another thing that I love about your shots. You're you're thinking of the environment and how things would, like outside elements would affect the subject, you know? Uh, And that's why your photos work so well. Um, I did have a question though regarding, and Mike, you could, I know I'm taking all of Alex's (laughs) Time. You can jump in. Poor Mike but, has just been watching in <laughs> silence, man. He's in awe of the greatness right now. <laughs> for sure. Um, so, it, for your dioramas, then, and like for future like uh, commissions and stuff, would you want like uh, neutral colors then for nothing to like pop? Like, let's say if there were like I don't know. There was, let's say, for example, you commissioned somebody to make like a castle diorama, stairs, and you know, pillars and stuff. <laughs> would, would it have to be like stone, neutral colors? Like you can't have like, like let's say the window arch is like gold or anything, a bright gold, uh, just because of your photography and your style. Um, I wouldn't say so. I just know that I like gray a lot. I like kind of a dark gray because. It looks good with with warm and cool tones, so I just like that a lot. But my warehouse dio, there's like some reds and some blues in various places, you know, different signs and stuff. So I wouldn't say so, um, but to be honest with you, I don't have that many dios with color, mm-hmm. and it's not intentional. It just kind of just mainly what I asked for and stuff like that. I'm sure um, for outdoor stuff. You absolutely need. I would like, yeah. Put put some red flowers there. Put you know something brown over here. Put something weird. like a bunch of colors for outdoor is a definite yes. But I wouldn't say that it's a deterrent for anything um, indoor or you know industrial or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Huh. I do. I do think it, it it works better for certain things though. If it's like a space base or something like that. If it's like an X Men you know, training room or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of want, you want metal, you want red buttons, you want green buttons, you want blue screens. You know, it depends on what it is, I think. But I think for a castle, I don't think it matters much, Um, especially since you just kind of work with what you're using. And, you know, I, I just kind of work with the environment. If there's gold right there, okay, I'm using purple lights. It's not even that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, Mike, we're gonna we're we're gonna talk shop after this. Actually, yeah, Alex, stay behind. We'll, we'll talk shop. Um, I I had another question lined up. Let me uh, let me buffer for a little bit. Yeah, so I got some questions on the stuff that you collect, if that's cool. Sure. So I see you got a lot of mythic. Have you jumped into any of the uh, uh, sci-fi myth? What is it called again? Cosmic. Ah, now see that has been a um i've stayed away from that due to uh survival and uh finances (laughs) Um, so i've i've decided that i'm just gonna stick with mythics since i kind of just started with that and obviously that's the you know older line it's the more seasoned line so i was always interested in it so I'd, i'd rather stick with that than you know be in debt because i'm in into both at the same time uh, so it looks great. I would love to, but I, I think I'm just going to stay away from it. Plus, I, you know, with with not having Star Wars stuff or really any space dials or anything, it's like it would be easier to try and make something that looks less high tech than something that looks high tech. So, yeah, Fair enough. yeah I'm, sti- I'm sticking with with Mythics, but the Cosmics do look really good. And I'm sure Mar- Mario will buy some and then sell them uh, a few months later. Well, I, was just, I was just about to say I have. Um, I went all in on wave one plus extra army builders. So I'm sure I, I, if I don't send them all to you, I'll at least send you a couple of the builders. <laughs> at least one. Well, that would be the way that I would have some. Yeah. Give, give you a taste, you know, give you a taste. <laughs> so what lines are you currently collecting or looking forward to uh, in the coming months? 
Um, currently collecting it's, you know, occasionally Legends and then uh, G the G.I. Joe Classified, uh, Black Series occasionally, Black Series I've been kind of getting sour on, uh, Legions, Valiverse, uh, I think those are the main ones. I really want to, uh, I actually have, I've been getting into the Jada Toys stuff recently, this is the Wolfman, uh, it's very good. Um, I really wanted to get the uh, the fa oh Mario I hate you so much. I, find those. <laughs> I really want to get into the Street Fighter stuff, but I can't find them. So I would I would really like to get into that. I want to support that line. They look great. Uh, I obviously really like Street Fighter. I have for for seven nine six level up. I did a shot of Ryu and Akuma. I have the SHF versions. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I. I think I archived that. I didn't like that photo at all. Um, but, is that the one where he was standing in the dojo? No, 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 no. Uh, I think, I think Ryu was kicking Akuma, or Akuma was kicking Ryu. It was white hot. I remember that was one okay. of the challenges. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I archived that. That was terrible. Um, <laughs> but I really want to get into into that line uh, if I could find them. If the distribution was better, June. I hope you're watching. Please, uh, oh, Mario. Did you did Mario, you, see? you yourself. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot stand you holding up Fei Long any longer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you have triggered me very, very harshly. How dare you? And you know, I was going back and forth if I was going to show you that on stream or not because I saw your little thing. You're like Fei Long is a myth. He is a myth. I've been to so many targets. Same well, here. you know what? Same here. Uh, it, I know it's been a. a uh, touchy subject, but it's a good thing to see that they're selling out, right? Because that means oh, absolutely popular, uh, popular, and it's going to be successful. However, so he said that they actually have a dedicated Jada section in targets, and his plan is to just keep them stocked. So when you go in, you'll see him because he said we have the space, and if nothing's there, we're just losing money, right? So I think it, you know it's a new line um they were testing it out they've reordered and he's got to fulfill those reorders so you should see him soon and i think by the time they get out there uh bbts might be shipping them out so they're still available at bbts but um everyone's going to be able to get these so just just hang absolutely tight. i just want them now i i know how you feel did you see that chun lee that he was showing off i did that looks really good figure of the year already I, I'm, I'm just patiently waiting for sagat because SHF put out oh, yeah. Sagat Jr. and he looked terrible. He was yeah. short. <laughs> he was so weird. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm so waiting for that. But yeah, that's that's definitely a line that I want to get into uh, as soon as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, quick question on that. So when's that next wave dropping this year? Uh, the next wave? Yeah. Wave two with Ken. Uh, Bison and Dalsim, he said uh, ideally he wants them to be out uh, before the end of the year. So, yeah, this year. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, and I, I don't know when those pre orders are going to go up, but uh, we'll, we'll talk to him when we go to SDCC. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. We got to go talk to him. Uh, Alex, are you going to SDCC or no? <laughs> no. Uh, I have never been. I would like to. It just uh, never has worked out. But I definitely would like to. Yeah, this, this will be my first time going out there. So. Same here. Uh, oh, look here. at both of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So when it comes to like the uh, your shoots, obviously it's it's been a little bit of time. Uh, but does inspiration come from like when you get your hand on a figure, or does inspiration come from like a shot you have in mind? The figure is kind of just something that comes up to fulfill it. Um, the shots happen because I got a, a new figure primarily. You know, when I'm shooting regularly, yeah. a lot of times it's oh I picked up this stormtrooper. And now here are three shots of the Stormtrooper, and then a couple weeks go by, and oh, I picked up this. So when it's on a regular schedule, um, it's it's the figure that kind of drives the photo. I very rarely go and take a photo of something older or something I already took a photo of. Not be, not because like it's you know I want to shoot only new stuff. It's just that's how it happens. Um, so 
yeah, the, the, the figure kind of drives it and it depends on the character. You know, if it's something that I know I can shoot very well, like a blade or a, you know, a Punisher or something like that, then those come pretty natural to me. Sometimes, a lot of times it's looking at different artwork. It's reading a certain story about the person. Um, it just depends on how I'm feeling about the certain figure. If I like it, what character is it, you know, blah, 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 all that type stuff. All right. Yeah, you can, my you message know. to those in the chat and those that are watching later: If you want more photos from Alex, start sending him toys. <laughs> yeah, start sending him figures. Yeah, because I was going to say, pay long. <laughs> yeah, send him a pay long. <laughs> Dude, you can always count on photos coming up soon when it's either Alex's birthday or Christmas. Christmas haul is my big is my big series most of the time. That that is true. I actually, I don't think I, I didn't do Christmas haul this year. I don't think. Did you not? I didn't. I wanted to, and then a whole bunch of stuff came up. What, what did you get in for your Christmas haul? A bunch of stuff <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't shot yet. I painted it though, probably. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I wanted to initially do Christmas and birthday haul together, but stuff came up. So I'm kind of uh, waiting to do everything haul. Here's the haul since December 27. You know, Cap Lives is blocked. <laughs> <laughs> he is permanently banned. <laughs> Actually, you know, that's not a bad idea. Um, I'm just looking at some stuff that I could send Alex to, to shoot. Um, no. <laughs> I, I would love to see you shoot some acid rain figures. See, that would be interesting. I'm just uh, very staunch about 112. You wouldn't shoot 118? I mean, I'm sure it would look fine. I just don't have the passion for 118 like I used to. So mm. I'm not sure how the photos would come out if I'm not passionate about it, if that makes sense. Okay. Sure, with a fresh dio and some figs, he may, he may get the itch. Definitely a fresh dio, wink, wink. I got you, man. <laughs> when did you need that by next month? Oh, <laughs> I did say summer. You did. I, I had June uh, in my head, and, and mm. we we're quickly approaching that. I mean, I have, I have something. I showed you that, and I was thinking of repurposing that. But I mean, we'll, we'll talk backstage because I have ideas. That's all I have is ideas. <laughs> hey, I, there was a reason that I asked you though, because I really well, number one, I've been wanting to collab with you for years now on mm -hmm. on something, but also I want to see Super Saiyan Mario. I want to see a hundred percent Magnum Opus. Yeah, I put everything into this. This is all of my passion. This is all my creativity because I don't think we've seen that yet, and that's no. not a bad thing. Absolutely. By any means, but I really want to see that from you. I, I'm I'm passionate about seeing my 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 friends at at their full talent level. You know, I'm telling Finn this all the time. I'm telling Aiden. I'm telling uh, Cap Lives, uh, he who shall not be named. Um, you know, I'm telling 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 people all these things because I, I really like seeing that. Because for me, I'm always trying to achieve that, and I feel like I don't. <laughs> so I, I I want to see other people do it, and for you specifically, I'm like. Let's get out of cyberpunk. Let's let's see what he can do. Totally new, something just bam. And I, that's why I, I didn't ask Mike as badly as I wanted to because I knew he probably would have made it by now. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, yeah. I mean, and that's uh, no. I appreciate that because I I have been feeling. I don't think I've posted any diorama stuff since I did that cyberpunk for salient, which was I think over a year ago or maybe yeah, about a year. Ago. And that wasn't even like a passion project. That was just something like I got to hook him up because he hooked me up, you know, and, and he liked it. And I had fun building that. But I am waiting for that. That masterpiece that I'm just like, OK, this is like it's clicking, you know, I'm hitting that flow state every time I carve foam or whatever. And that's why I don't post because like I don't I mean, I'm I'm building constantly building behind the scenes. Right. Just so I don't lose it. But I. uh I don't post anything because I I hate everything, right? Yes, I need to come back. I've been too hinged. They they they're they're, they're keeping me down, man. I gotta 
I gotta break who these is, chains. Who's they? Man. My employers. Um, <laughs> they, they put a sensor on me. No, but um, I ha I did. I'll just show this off. I did this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was gonna make and that big is, so we can see proof. Oh, of yeah, and this is something. No life. It's uh, it's I I I think I told you guys I hate making terrain pieces and stuff. Um, but this was a fun little project for the Micro Galaxy Squadron stuff, and I hate this thing. I hate this piece because it didn't okay. come out like how I envisioned. And Mike's like, oh, yeah, this, this looks good because I wanted it to be like super contrasty, and right now it's just kind of flat. You know what I mean? But it works. And Mike, you said something. You're like, I'm like, I'm, I think I'm gonna redo this, repaint it. He's like, or you could just call it done and move on to the next build. And I'm like, you no, know, no, I said like, make another one. I just say move on to the next build, and make another one because I oh, want to get one. <laughs> make a two point. You want you want this here? I'll send it to you. Make a two point oh. But I like this because it's like a shelf piece. You know, it's not for photographers. I mean, you can certainly take a picture on it, but this is a display piece, right? I got the wood on the side. I framed it up, right? And then you can put your whatever on there. And if I was going to change it, I wish I did like a. a a deeper angle on it right because that composition looks it still looks a little dead on you know but um you know just something to kind of get the uh the creative juices flowing and kind of get back into it because i don't want to i don't want to work on something if i'm not feeling it knowing that it's going to go to somebody else um and i did want to bring up a point you're probably the best person to, to to send a diorama to right mike you we talk about this all the time especially you mike you've put out like a ton of stuff and then you never see it again but you know if you send something to alex you'll see it all the time <laughs> the crates are a good example <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> i think there's a single photo that i have of right now without the crates <laughs> since you sent them i was like i'm putting this everywhere i need everyone has a crate somewhere yeah, dude, I, that's so funny because I remember um, I was just messing around and I'm like, oh, you want these here? Here you go. And they actually looked pretty good. And I had a lot of fun making those crates. And then when I saw um, your photos with them, I'm like, oh, damn, they look really good. But they only look that good because you you took a shot. No, they look great. I mean, there's one that I kind of stepped on and it looks a little wrong, but, <laughs> you know. They, they, they look real good. You know what, Cap? I'm so glad you said that because um, I took a, a um, screenshot from, I forgot, what was that episode three? Where Obi-Wan yeah. landed on Geonosis? Yeah. And that's what it was based off of. So thank you for saying that, man. Oh, this is the question I wanted to go to. Or not question statement. <laughs> Cap. I'll be <laughs> we got another legend in the house too oh the one and only yeah yeah man so uh, i um i'll i'll uh i'll send you something real real nice alex well uh oh i know i know i'm i'm, I'm just waiting i'm waiting for the moment it's the it's the whole modular aspect that's killing me and and the dimensions too which is <laughs> i don't think it's gonna work man so we we, we gotta hash that out hey hey I, i'm just trying to create 796 2.0 that's just that's just what i want this might be we might be on 4.0 <laughs> 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 I did shoot some Batman, Matthew. Come on, man. Yeah, you get maybe like two Batman shots in your entire grid. <laughs> I, I think it was wasn't that three or four? I think it was three or four. Okay. Give me my other two. <laughs> Are you not a DC guy? I am a DC guy, but it's not a uh McFarlane guy or before that DC director, DC UC. I wasn't those figures were terrible. 
and McFarlane has beer can hands for every character. I wasn't, <laughs> I'm not fond of that. So um, I got the Mezco Batman, the Sovereign Knight, and I was like, oh, I actually like this. I did get the Hush one, but he kind of messed up on me. So, um, what do you mean? The uh, the cape kind of you know QC issues and oh, things like okay so, yeah that uh, nice. I got the Mexico one and I got a wire cape for him and uh, that that was fun I got a Joker for him I still have to shoot him with Joker um, mm-hmm. but yeah it's just been because of the company I I really like DC you know I really want some good Green Lanterns uh, I do have the Mexico Green Lantern I shot him once uh, yeah I remember but, yeah. that. <clears throat> Yeah, that was a struggle, and I still don't like that shot. But um, yeah, I, I am a, I am a DC fan. Obviously, Rorschach. I shot Rorschach a bunch. I was very excited about that. So yeah, Moffat does pretty good with their DC line. They do. I just uh, I can barely afford them half the time. Oh yeah, that, that, yeah. That's what I was, that's what I was talking about. Uh, McFarlane, McFarlane. I picked up a few. Like I'm not heavy into McFarlane, but started picking them up because they're like twelve, fifteen bucks. It feels pretty comfortable to make that kind of decision <laughs> these mm-hmm. days. Right. You know, Alex, you 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 got to challenge yourself, man. You got to pick up some McFarlane figures, and you got to shoot these things. Have you seen? <laughs> Matthew's been making them look pretty decent. They look. I mean, you got to mod them, you know, a little bit. But uh, you I have faith in you, man. I, I I think you could uh, take some some killer shots. The sculpts look great, though, on McFarlane. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just the hands and the scale that kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, that kind of bothers me. Yeah, huh? I'll uh, we'll, we'll send you some McFarland figures then. <laughs> Please <laughs> don't. Please, <laughs> I am I am good on that. I like the spawn though, the spawns that they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm waiting for like a manga spawn, manga spawn. That would be so dope. I don't know if you <laughs> remember that from the from the '90s. You probably weren't even alive yet but uh, i was not but i do know what you're talking about <laughs> it's so dope um yeah you know what um i was out of black series and they showed that new ahsoka and i'm like oh she don't come with the force hands but i can repurpose some marvel legend hands paint them up i i pre-ordered two of her she looks good oh there. wow yeah, I have a love hate relationship with Black Series just because they're like the only people making all the Star Wars figures. So it's like, well, I it's Darth Maul, I need to get it. But you know, yeah. he has single knees and very yeah. few paint apps and no hands. But um you know, some of them I actually really enjoy. I like the uh the Dark Trooper and uh and Wrecker, you know, like bigger characters I think they're doing really good with. He has single knees? He does, yes. You it would be perfect for some double knees, wouldn't it? But no, single knees and a swivel. Well, to give them credit, though, some of those single joints actually get pretty good angle and range. But some of them, more not recently, bad. not many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so they're so close. I mean, their sculpts are are. I think they have been improving uh, over the past year. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew's not wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was done with Black Series, Chad. Uh, but then that Ahsoka looks great, and then the you know I'm a sucker for army building. I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy these things and then and then sell them again because well, that's just zero, everything. Yeah, I have zero self control, man. Um, <laughs> oh man, I uh, I I was laughing earlier because when you did um, the Shutterbug podcast, can we talk about that too? I one of the running jokes was. <laughs> When you guys went over your halls, and you're like, Alex, what did you get? Oh, air this week? <laughs> air, but air Jordans, but no Jordans. Just air. <laughs> Just air. I love I love that. Mm-hmm. Um I, I really enjoyed the uh the Shutterbugs. It was a podcast um focused solely on toy photography. You guys would pick, you know, some shots, you would give some feedback. What was it? It was like you would pick two shots, right? Shots you like, then yeah. shots you would yeah, shot, shots of the week, shots, you know, that people wanted some advice on. Uh it was kind of fun doing that. Um, because we got to like highlight, you know, kind of what our preferences were as far as who shots we like. Well, not who shots we like, but what shots we liked, mm-hmm. as well as, you know, just helping some people. It's like, oh, just you know, don't dutch it. 
just shoot it portrait style or you know right. you know what, what have you i saw that smile when i mentioned dutch yeah yeah you know how i feel about the dutch right Angle. and that was how i felt for the longest time until i got a dial big enough where i could dutch and i was like oh this isn't this isn't so bad like i actually kind of like doing this but i hated I'm, i hated dutching with my own photos other people's photos i was cool with but my own i was like i really don't like this i don't like it at all i remember but, that first time i seen the dutch angle in one of your shots i was like I don't even know who you are anymore, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I, I, I enjoy doing it now. I, it it kind of it, it adds a little something. I don't do it unless I feel like it needs it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think just doing it wouldn't look good. But, like, sometimes it's just straight on. I'm like, uh, no. And then yeah. I kind of tell them, like, yes, yes. Like that one uh, that one Mando that you shot. And I, I think if it, if it uh, was dead on... You know completely horizontal it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same picture you know what I mean? mm-hmm. right it does have its its time and place mm-hmm. um <laughs> the dutch angle not the dutch okay let's just, <laughs> just i don't need to get canceled again all right <laughs> dutch angle everyone Jeez. yeah but i i do miss the uh the shutter bugs um any possibility that comes back no, we all hate each other. It was a big fight, and uh, we blocked each other, and it's over. We're never okay. speaking to each other again. Um, <laughs> no, um, we, we wanted to. It's just everyone's just been individually busy, you know, whether it's school or, uh, you know, just not feeling like it, uh, you know, various things. So we want to eventually, like I said, it's a bi yearly podcast, so I'm sure 2024 is about to be popping. <laughs> yeah oh um in terms of uh picking shots matthew i i um between two sentinels does that they uh well not really like how um how alex and friends would have done it you know uh they they mainly just pick the shots that they like but the one thing I did like about the Shutterbugs podcast was you pick shots to provide advice and critiques, right? And I don't think there's enough of that uh, going on, you know? And when we said earlier in this in this show, you need somebody to be able to tell you where you can improve, right? Otherwise, you'll, you won't grow, you know? Right. You do the same stuff over and over. Right, and you, and you need people that, that you respect and people that you know there there are some people and it's not like necessarily a bad thing where their version of critique doesn't really work for you like oh it's a little too nitpicky it's a little too broad you mm-hmm. know so you have you have to find people that it like works you know there could be some people that's like the the logo is slightly covered by his cape and it's like well that's not a problem with the photo yes. you know and then there's some people that's going to go i don't i don't know it just it doesn't look right it's like, well, what does it look right? You, yeah. know what I mean? you need people that are able to really kind of tell you what it is. Like, oh, move this prop, switch this light, turn this down, blah, blah. You know, you kind of definitely want to find those people because if people just kind of give you broad or very tiny things, then you're not going to get good results because you're going to be wondering about certain stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's like speaking a, a, a specific language. You both have right. to be on the same wavelength, right? To to both receive it and give out that that criticism, you know. Yeah, I was gonna um, say you gotta be receptive of it, right? And you gotta be asking for it, sort of, right? Or you're not gonna be receptive of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, um, yeah, I, I've certainly given some advice to people where they they say they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense, and then they just it nothing was done, and that's that's very frustrating too, right? Know? Because we just spent like an hour, you know, <laughs> diving into this and it like nothing was done. In fact, you might have done the opposite of what I said. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or or you told them to do something and it wasn't what she said and then they completely ruined it. That's the worst one. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. It was just one tiny thing and then you didn't understand and now it's completely terrible. And I don't know how to tell you that it, you should throw it away now. Like, I liked it before i even spoke to you and now i hate it <laughs> yeah yeah there there have been some times where i'm like 
oh that's the shot okay <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> going with that um <clears throat> yeah it'd be cool because like I mean, we talked about this before mario how like everybody is almost too kind in the community and sometimes you're wondering and I would like to get some like real feedback, like not just, oh, something looks off, like you said, Alex, something specifically that I can do to make this better. Right. And, right. Uh, you know, sometimes there's not there's not a lot of that. I'm not asking for it, guys. I'm just I'm just saying. Right. Yeah, Please everybody... don't flip my comments. This yeah, McDonald's like... sign is too crooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you don't want the cheerleaders, man. You want people to give you. you right. know, um Especially if you want growth. Right. That's how you grow. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like I said, yes, men will just eventually you just need to quit. If everyone thinks everything looks good, oh, no. It's, it's, it's not a Mike, good look. Mike just quit. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> We're being too nice to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and this, it, it, this is the opposite. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh Actually, my God. God. I, I was thinking of a um, of a new show where it's kind of like a, a Comedy Central roast. You know, you, you get like the guest of honor and then you pull up the grid and you just roast them. Right. I mean, obviously, you'd have to have like a thick skin <laughs> <laughs> and, and probably probably consent to being roasted is probably. Exactly, yeah. Can you imagine like if, if somebody hopped on and they didn't know it was a roast and you just <laughs> Oh, that actually sounds like something I would watch, though. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> oh man! You should add that in. People don't know that it's a roast. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, I, on. I I wanted to see the the highlights. I wanted to show off some of the uh, BTS behind the scenes. Can you pull that up, Mike? Yes, sir. Give me a second. Uh, that's in the the stories yeah you have to tell me which one you guys want to look at but yeah let's do that the highlights right. alex i'll let you you pick is there any um i mean you can go to weathering pretty much any of these you know there's a uh, yearly behind the scenes uh you know blade month which i, I assume we can talk about later um there's not anything major um, so that's the skeleton that was in the cobwebs. Mm. Um, and I just kind of just added gold. That was one of the first legions I did. So it's nothing too crazy. Did you do anything to this guy? Mother him? This one, yeah, I, I added the gold and the blood. And there's dirt. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. And there's kind of some silver on the armor. Wow. Yeah. So he was just gray. And then, you know, the skeleton color. There wasn't anything else. Yeah, I don't know if it's the lighting, but it definitely has more of a, I don't want to say matte, but he doesn't look. I was going to say, yeah. See, I wouldn't be a good critic. I can't tell you what it is, but there's something. <laughs> <laughs> and I did this the uh, female skeleton in the back, too. Um, and then that one, I added blue and dirt. These are earlier ones, so it's not as in-depth as kind of my later ones. Um, I think in the Mythic Legions tab, uh, the highlight tab, if you want to go to that, um, You'll see the the Viking, the, the barbarian I did, and uh, some other ones. And that that's behind the scenes for the cobwebs. So you can see it was just Halloween webs I used. And then you can see, look at the dial, look at the dial on the yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about with the the uh, depth of field with the uh, aperture. It's yeah. it's just two pillars and then a light behind it. So really, you can get away with just props, man. I mean, it takes days, like I said, but, but pretty much. Well, I was going to say earlier, you're talking about the Dio and <clears throat> how you kit bash. It almost seems like you should have these individual components made specifically to be able to do this. So not like one Dio altogether, but pieces, kind of what Mario was just saying, right? Props, but that are standalone. They're all standalone, right? <laughs> yeah, these these weren't technically an intentional for a standalone. This was for the building of the dio if i wanted the walls all together to be taller i put those on top of those so there's like magnets on them and i put the walls on top of that and i could take it off and then i could have the wall shorter if i needed so i just obviously detached these 
you know, and then just kind of sat them around. I've used these pillars a lot for vague, you know, stuff like this, like Star Wars. I use it on the Ahsoka shot. Uh, I did. That's one of my more recent shots that's on the grid. But yeah, it's it's just pieces. And like on the right, that's the bottom of a throne that I have from uh, Terraformer. Terraformer, excuse me. Um, Great artist. Mm hmm. He's a, he's amazing, and uh, he he actually made that for me for Doom World, and uh, I will still be using it when when I get back to that. Sick. Yeah, there should be the barbarian repaint in this one, and that was more in depth because you know I was putting brown on some of the leather and and different things of dirt and well other stuff. This I used cobwebs again. I actually wrote a story for this one uh, when I posted it. Um, I sent that to a couple people and they were like, oh my gosh, I really like it. You should put it on there. I was kind of wondering because it was, I, I wasn't doing the legions lore because I only know a little bit about it. Um, but most of it is kind of vague. So I was just kind of making up stuff. And... What did you use for the uh, cobwebs? It was just Halloween decorating uh, webs. Oh, okay. So actual like Halloween cobweb. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, what people put on their houses and mm -hmm. stuff. It just it it looked most effective to me, so that's what I used. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, there's the barbarian, and uh, that one I did a lot to silver. I changed the horns, added gold, the red on the belt buckle. I had to paint all the leather on the uh, the loin cloth there. Uh, repainted the the great sword and the axe. Added some dirt on his arms, stuff like that. So this this is more recent, my kind of weathering stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it all brush weathering? You do anything with um, airbrush or anything? I don't have an airbrush, so yes, it's all brush uh, weathering. I do want to get into an airbrush at some point. I just haven't had the time to really kind of dive into that yet, but I definitely want to try that at some point. I know Mario has seen me uh, fuss about some figures that I wanted to do in the past that I was like, I just need an airbrush. I can't do it the way I, the way I want to do it with a brush. Yeah, the, the airbrush is definitely nice. It can be frustrating but there if you can master like the hand brush there are some painters out there that you would swear that it's an airbrush like i alex i've sent you a couple um reels from like the miniature painters that right. on a whole number if i could like just download one skill that would be <laughs> it you know what i mean just because i oh, totally get wow, it it looks so good it looks so good man and there's, yeah, there's like I remember when you sent that to me. It was ridiculous. Like, Absolutely uh, ridiculous. It, there's a technique called non-metallic metal. So they take just regular opaque colors, non-metallics, and they paint it in a way where it looks metal or reflective. And it's nuts, dude. So Yeah, I'd, I definitely would want to get to that level, level or uh, night shifts uh, level of dirt. I think his dirt is amazing. Ooh, that's why that's why I started doing these things. Night Shift, I think, is probably the best out there right now. Like his, like the the weathering, the uh remember I sent you that video? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that, he's, he's the reason I started yeah. using the sponge. Yeah. He yeah, because he he stops doing like the individual chipping. He's like, cause this takes like, you know. 60 something hours to do but yeah his dio game is so good so good man yeah and the, these are when i when i uh pick these up a friend of mine sent these to me i was forever grateful and then i just kind of went to town painting them <clears throat> i'm sure the the skeleton repaint should be coming up soon uh oh no that the the Gladiator is arguably my favorite one that I painted just because I did all the blood. And as you can see, that's what he looked like before. And then I just wanted to change some things about him. I, I just love the freedom that Mythic Legions offers you because it takes paint so well. So yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I can make his visor black instead of completely gold because it's going to stay black. Like, you know, a lot of times you can paint like a Hasbro figure and because the plastic is so glossy i want to say for lack of a better word it won't take the paint as well you know you have to sand it you have to do all this other stuff you don't have to do that with legions you can just kind of just go straight to straight to painting um so i 
I, I had a lot of fun with this one, uh, just kind of getting the small details, you know, making his feet a little bloody because, you know, he's fighting in an arena. He doesn't have shoes on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, doing the, the, the weapons, you know, dry brushing, adding gold and, and kind of blues and silvers to him. So I had a lot of fun with that one, as well as the, uh, the more recent skeletons because legions, I mean, it's just so easy to just keep swiping the paint on there. You don't really have to work it too much. You know, mm -hmm. other things, Hasbro, whatever, you have to like really like paint it, sand it, spray it, yeah. paint it, you know, just kind of go over and over. It, yeah. uh, so I don't know what type of plastic they use for the Legion builders, but it's, I wish everybody used it for painting. Yeah, I think it's just, um, it's got like a, like a grain to the plastic so it can accept, because that's why you have to like sand stuff. You got to rough it up so it accepts the paint. But yeah, they're, right. um, yeah, I mean, it, I think that was the whole purpose or like they, they had that in mind. They're like, we're going to make this so customizers will will have fun with it, you know, and it's another mm -hmm. way to get more mileage out of these figures, too. You know, it's definitely a question right. I want to try to get answered. And th this one uh, was actually a different process completely because I didn't want to change the armor too much like the other ones like the gladiator it was a completely different armor color that I changed it to this one i just wanted him shinier and i actually found a, a technique using uh null and oil from uh what is it citadel and mm -hmm. uh where people they they'll take it and it's supposed to be like a black wash but you kind of wipe the black out and kind of just use the uh i forget what the term is uh, for what they mix with the pigment, but you kind of use that and they kind of, they kind of call it like glazing and you just kind of put that on and it kind of adds some shine. So I was really uh, happy with kind of how that looked on him and kind of made him look much more shiny. And I put some silver under that before I kind of glossed him up just to kind of make it seem more vibrant. Um, <laughs> That's me complaining about Outback. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you were doing that before it was cool. <laughs> I was then, listen, that was so frustrating. And I I didn't even get 89 Batman like, you know, some others, so it wasn't wasn't that big a deal for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you go out, Mike, and you can uh you can see 2022 behind the scenes or 2021, uh it should be over there oh, somewhere. There but yeah, I, I all I pretty much always take behind the scenes of what I did just to kind of show you, like this is what I did. Now this is the, this is a more vast setup. This yeah. is what I was talking about when I say sometimes I will use all my depth. Like this is all my depth right here. You know, I got I got the rooftop configuration and the walls back there, and I didn't you didn't even see the walls in the shot. It's just you know sometimes you have to see what works with with your idea. So I didn't know what angle I was specifically going to use. That was what I landed on. Dude, that, that was one of the shots I remember you sending me because you put him like center frame on the left of the right. frame. I'm like, man, just pick pick a spot. <laughs> and right. you was the same. Then I, yeah, it was initially much lower, and then I kind of picked it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, this because the uh, I actually took that from a page from Watchmen, where That's right. it, and and I I took a quote from from that page and in the Watchmen version it's a little bit lower and he's actually sitting on a chimney I think mm -hmm. so I was initially just going with the source and I was like no nah, I need to spice this up a little bit this is also full depth um I saw uh Rico CH on Instagram uh he'll just use a wall like it's another building on the other side so I was like let me try doing that and kind of seeing what I can get this one I used the actual colors from Watchmen. Uh, mm -hmm. The artist I'm blanking on his name right now, but he used a lot of purples and, and oranges in the whole color scheme of the comic. Um, this one was a little bit hard to show what I did because it was the steam, and I couldn't film and use the steam at the same time. Um, I recognize the backdrop. That's that um, birthday party city. Thing, yeah. Right? Yeah. But you can see how the end, how the end result, the photo looked. That doesn't look like that without the steam or without the aperture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that birth party, that birthday party thing, I used for years. I don't use it as much anymore, just because I haven't needed to. But right, That's oh, dude, dude, this one is nuts. Yeah. This one I was actually, I was actually moderately pleased with, and the <laughs> algorithm did not let anyone see it. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I think I think. The first week, it was only like a hundred 
likes and only like a hundred people had seen it. Like I looked at the uh, at the statistics and I was like, oh man. When, when I came back for this batch of photos, that was the first time I had come back with whatever the new algorithm was for the reels. Mm -hmm. Prior to then it was pre-reels. So more people were seeing my stuff. So when I came back, it was kind of like jarring, like, oh my God, no one's seeing. Like I got so many people saying, I didn't even know you were back. I didn't even know. It was right, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, the uh, the algorithm doesn't really support art and artists anymore, man. It's sad. Right. I remember the good old days, the good old days right. when we had pose sessions and, you know, just. Posting. Right. Even in 2021, I was uh, I just had a random boost in people seeing it. Like I was getting one K's, which is very rare for me uh, as far as likes. not like likes is a big is like a big deal, but it was just like, oh, more people are actually you know, seeing my, my uh, photos. So it was kind of a big deal. And then I come back in 2022 and no one's seeing, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's tough out there. But man, this is like, people are sleeping on this, this, I mean, your art, man. Yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I make it for me, so. Yeah, and that that's one thing I do appreciate, uh, appreciate about you, man. It's never been about like the likes and you just, you'll kind of go at your own pace. You know, it's like, Hey, I'm going to put out a batch. I'm telling you, it's like going into production and then dropping the season and letting people binge, you know, when it comes out, when you're ready. Right. And this is like the, uh, the Magneto thing, uh, you know, the plastic right in front of the window, it disappears. Is that how it works? <laughs> Yoko? I didn't, uh, <laughs> I missed that part. Yeah, yeah th this was a lot of kit bashing because in the back, those are two flaps from a bin. And I wanted to look more techno because it's Forge. Right, yeah, yeah. And to get the bokeh, you know. And I, I think I I accidentally enabled you to get the uh, the I aim mean, side when yeah. I sent you this. You were like, oh, I need that, I need that, I need that pad, I need that tablet. That's so funny. <laughs> I actually have this tablet out right now on the kitchen table because I was going through my accessories, you know. Um, yeah, I bought that figure just for that tablet. <laughs> I was like, bro. <laughs> but you were like so hyped to get the tablet, too. You were like, oh my gosh, where, where did you get it? <laughs> yeah, dude. How did you, um, like, figure out the lighting, dude? Because, you again, you're known for your cinematic lighting, this, this mood lighting. No one's ever told me that before. Really? Well, <laughs> there we go. We're just breaking the news to you. Like, was it just trial and error? Or like, is there? To be honest with you, I didn't consciously work on the lighting. Like, I want everyone to talk about my lighting. I was just kind of just doing it. Like, practicing everything was just how I was doing it. You know, posing and lighting just kind of happened. Framing just kind of happened. It wasn't really like a conscious decision to go, I want everyone to look at my lighting and go, yo, look at that. You know, it, it just kind of, it just kind of formed that way. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't really say that there was any point where I was like, oh, I figured this. I mean, I figured stuff out along the way. Mm -hmm. um, I remember years ago, uh, even back when I was shooting on a phone, I saw pa plastic snaps he had this photo of Jason coming out of the water and there was a sky behind him. And I was like, wow, look at how bright the sky is. I wonder how he did that. And I looked at his behind the scenes and I saw that uh, his shutter was very low. Mm. So I was like, okay. And then I kind of figured out the, the fill is kind of the easier thing to manipulate with settings. Yeah. You know, you, if you, brighten you know the background a whole bunch you actually don't need as much light from the camera to 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 brighten the background up you can kind of move it around in, in certain ways so i kind of figured that stuff out along the way but it wasn't a serious decision of mine it just kind of happened so who are some of the artists that you have learned for some of your favorite toy photographers out there um, myself, no, I'm joking. <laughs> just a 180 on. <laughs> no, um, what's funny is stylistically, um, my inspirations are much different from what I do. So, like, uh, my biggest inspiration was uh, Weapon X03 on Instagram, Adam Smith. 
Um, and we don't really shoot the same. He, you know, I have really low aperture. He has really high aperture. He, you know, he has more props and stuff than I do. He uses more characters than I do. You know, normally I, I shoot single characters like you've been seeing just because it's kind of easier. Um, but he was absolutely one of my favorites. He got me into, uh, into the ACBA group. I already knew about ACBA, but I just wasn't in the group yet, but he got me in there. He shared a lot of advice. He sent me some stuff. Um, so, so stylistically we're different, but I always enjoy it when he posts, um, uh, guys like Yasuke 79. He was one of the first people that uh, was really supporting my stuff. Um, I don't know if y'all remember the, the bullseye days, um, but he sent me bullseye. Really? He was the person that sent me bullseye. Yeah. And, uh, excuse me, his stuff is quite different from mine. It's kind of similar in some areas. Um, but he, he's one inspiration of mine. Finn Aiden was one of the first people I followed. Um, now I think his stuff is terrible. Don't follow him. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so a lot of my inspirations, they just, they don't shoot like me. And and there's guys that I've, that I've kind of pulled from that kind of are similar force photos, uh, sub DMK, uh, there's a few others that I'm kind of blanking on right now. One sick shooter, Trevor Williams. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, definitely one of my biggest inspirations. His shot of this orc on this throne is oh, one of my favorite shots ever. I yeah. love that shot. I repost it like weekly and he tells me to stop, but I keep doing it. I love that. I lo absolutely adore that shot. His stuff is amazing. I think he's one of the best people uh, in this hobby. Um, he's just he's just fantastic. Plastic Snaps was a big inspiration of mine. Simon Hill, uh, Boog, Boog Nice, Boog ACBA on Instagram. He's one of my big inspirations. Uh, but you know, I just I kind of pull from a lot of people. Uh, Zoran R06, aka my man Matthew Charles, uh, 1906. Excuse me. He's uh, he's excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. Totally different from me. I'm obviously doing much more stoic stuff he's doing action stuff and his stuff is phenomenal he's always killing it um i would like to see some more uh portraits from him you know he's a friend so i like pushing him <laughs> but but yeah I, I have a ton of people that i really like um i have watched to uh, art with toys like i mentioned uh i really like your shot of uh, thanos mario um you know i do iron man and thanos yeah <laughs> yeah really enjoy that shot but yeah i, I kind of just pull from where i pull from uh and just kind of go from there I, I think it's it's it would be very bad if you didn't have people that inspired you because then like what what are you doing mm -hmm. with your talent what, what, what's driving you to to create so there's a lot of people in the community that drive me to uh to create different things yeah there's a there's a ton of talent out there and the cool thing is like mostly everybody posts like their BTS, right? And that's your opportunity to learn, you know? You you can learn this stuff and people are willing to give out that information, right? So, uh, and that's a, everyone you mentioned, phenomenal artists. Um, I, I do really, um, I study Trevor stuff a lot, you know, when he does like his shoot and review things um i tell machi this all the time well i'm like i'm trying to get that that trevor atmospheric lighting that's that, that's tough to nail you know but once you you get that in like it completely changes the shot you know um man so much good stuff out there <clears throat> absolutely I keep looking at these different dio pieces and they're so cool. I don't know who the artists are, but I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Like that that wall of just like uh, crates. That was a great idea. Yeah, that that was Tom Tastic, and that was crazy because I didn't ask him uh, for that. He he just made it. I think he saw all of Mario's crates in my shots and was like, oh, this guy really likes crates. So that worked <laughs> out uh, perfectly. <laughs> Here's a Batman for Matthew. I hope Matthew's still here. There's Batman. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, it, he he made a lot of small pieces that uh that weren't originally on my list. That was like, he looks at what I'm doing. That's actually yeah. really smart. That's actually really smart as someone that's making something for a client. That's like, okay, what else can I do? What do they like? Clearly, mm -hmm. 
he likes crates. I think he noticed. There it is again in the back. Yeah, I think that's that's how you should approach it, right? Um, as a commit, you know, a commission piece. Like, how is this going to work? Or, you know, how's, how can they implement this into their current workflow, right? Because um, can you imagine, like, just getting a, a, a dio that you commissioned and you're like, I can't shoot this thing. Like, <laughs> right. I can't get the camera in there. This is not moving the way, you know? Right. Uh, who are who are some of your favorite dio artists? Um, high school creations. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually serious about that one. I'm not going to say seven nine six um, because that would just be, that would be disingenuous. Um, Rico, obviously, who I mentioned earlier, he's amazing. Um, I really like uh, Sage. I'm forgetting the other parts of his username, so uh, forgive me for that one. Um, and also Euler's workshop. Euler's. Yeah, his stuff is amazing. Absolutely amazing. It look it looks it looks absolutely real. Um, obviously, Terraformer, he's fantastic. Um, gosh, there's some others that I'm. Uh, Chris Lyons, I'm not sure if he makes dials anymore, but his stuff was really good. Mm -hmm. His stuff was really really good. Um, and uh, Lala Studios. Yeah, Paul Studios makes the best outdoor dials in my. Oh yeah, dude, he is the king of terrain. Absolutely killer outdoor dials. Yeah, insane. He has a very unique style too, you know. Yeah, right. Like you, you see that, like his rock formations. You're like, I know who, I know who made that. Right, automatically. I like that. Have I'm you? I, I was just about to ask a question. Have you ever shot just dio pieces without a figure as like your subject? In, in these know? updates, I did because um, I was just telling people like, "Oh, there's going to be interruption of shots." So like these next few that you'll see in this highlight is just the dio, um, and this was just because I the figure that I was waiting on wasn't showing up or like my tripod broke or something. So it was kind of just like a necessity thing, just to kind of have something in the background while I was telling people what was going on in case they were following along with the shots it's still very um, cool because i love this kind of stuff of course i'm a dio guy but it's still very cool especially the way you shoot it right thank you yeah yeah i, I was just it was also the dio was newer at the time so i was kind of visualizing okay what can i do with this because always the very first week of having the dial i'm like i i don't know how to use this i don't know what's the best way to i don't know what how to light it i don't know what like you know you have to kind of figure all that out you have to ease into it and kind of get used to it so um yeah these was just kind of me just figuring it all out um he, tom even did the graffiti of my uh, initials and stuff like that which i was uh, very pleased with I'm, I'm big on on random branding for myself i don't know why so i'm know. a fan <laughs> no, i'm sure you are i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure brown boy burgers is very <laughs> I, man i gotta i gotta somehow get that password back no you do so good yeah but i did enjoy taking these mike just because you know i was one trying to figure out how to use the dial and two i was like let me show what he did like it's it's crazy what you guys do from from my perspective because it it seems so ridiculously challenging. I think I would immediately quit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's always impressive to me. Um, and then these were test shots when I first got uh, the Legions. Just kind of, I had to get used to those too because they're a, they're an odd scale. Mm -hmm. The scale is odd. So I was kind of getting used to that when I first got into them. Yeah, they, they scale well with the uh, movie realization Bandai stuff. Mm hmm just saying maybe i should send you that figure to to take it yeah look at i think you would you would crush it those do look really good uh lord Bobas bobasaurus on instagram does really nice photos with those he was another one of the first people i followed mm -hmm. um, and see this was this was the first time i did one of the skeletons and i didn't like know like maybe you should saturate the armor accents more you know i was learning all this all this stuff yeah yeah, man, I'm looking forward to the uh, the next batch of customs and photos. So hopefully we see 
some more stuff from you soon, man. Yeah, I'm looking for I'm looking forward to the next batch of uh, seven nine six stuff too. Wink, wink. Maybe we'll uh, we'll chop it up later tonight, and you can give me some ideas. Um, right. Yeah, this year was supposed to be the year bringing back the photography, but we're already in in May, half of the year. So it's right. not over though. It's not over. That is true. It's not over yet. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and, uh, we talk about Mike for a second because I was looking at some of your older dials and I was like, why is he so good at making wood? Like, why does it look like real wood? That was, that was very impressive to me. Like, you know, I've, I've seen most of your stuff, but I hadn't really seen anything older, yeah. you know, like a few, a few years back. So I like saw like this pier that you did in like yeah, this, that was, uh, yeah. that was cool. Yeah. That was all out of foam actually. No wood. Uh, I was yeah, still that like, was crazy. Yeah, still learning and still just like not really experimenting outside of what I knew works. And so I did my hardest to make it look like real wood, even though the sad thing was you put a figure on it kind of bowed. And and that was kind of one of those things where I was like, okay, let me try other materials. But it's, you know, it's interesting how, you know, you kind of evolve over time, right? That was just foam using water and a wire brush, I think. Yeah. Mm. And then it evolved me into using real materials like wood especially when I got into like CNC's and lasers, like, Oh, I can definitely do this. Right. I can just draw it up digitally and then cut it. And it's perfect. But yeah, yeah, I do used to do a lot of experimenting. And so, you know, but the thing I try to do is that realism, right. Try to make everything is, you know, scaled, right. Right. Nothing's oversized. And then try to get those, those small details like wood grain so that, you know, you see that there was also where I used some kitty litter, tried to get some of the, uh, what do you call them? What is the, barnacles barnacles on the side of the piers and stuff like that right so just try to add that little extra realism those details that even though these dios don't really get shown in a picture they're they're blurred out right it still makes it tricks the mind of thinking it's it's real right yeah i mean it looks it looks really good like i was looking at it like i didn't even know that he did would like this i you know, I, yeah, I've obviously seen, you know, the bodegas, the, the alleyways and stuff, but I hadn't seen that yet. So I was like, yo, and, and Mario keeps doing cyberpunk signs <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over. Well, it's one of those <laughs> pillars in there. A couple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The action pillars. I got to bring that back. I sent that to you, Mike. I thought it was, I was looking for it. I'm like, where the hell is it? And he yeah, makes I, stands at the most inconvenient times for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Mike, I'm telling you, Mario knows when I just bought something and then he and then he puts out stands. I swear that he knows. It's hey, really you know what? And the people thank you for that, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really think that you know. And it, it, it's like really freaky every time that happens. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I just got a Mythic Legion's orc. I'm putting up stands at 8 p.m. No way. No way does he know. And Alex won't take any. I'm like, I'll send you some. He's like, nope. Like, See, I, I want I want to support. I feel like I take too much. And I and I want to support. And that's you you are a one of the, the biggest supporters, man, in the entire community, dude. So I try. I try. And I definitely want to buy some stands. Especially after I took those uh, crates and and used them for every photo <laughs> and barely tag you. <laughs> so if you did get flight stands, you'd have to change up your entire thing. You'd have to take like more action shots and. Oh that, well, that's the point. Okay. That's that's why I've been needing them for about six years. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, man, we got to get you some stands. We got to get you a diorama from Mike. Maybe from me. Oh, maybe from you now. Maybe. Um, Don't try and put it on Mike, bro. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Mike will get you a diorama like next week. Um, <laughs> I know, you know, but that that's the point. I'm trying to push you, man. I, I appreciate that. I, it, Mike, can you show off that one behind you again? Is that ready to go? No. Mm. I mean, you guys are teasing how quick I am, but I have commissions from like two years ago that aren't finished, so I'm pretty bad too. But I got a lot of things going on. But yeah, this one, well, can you guys see it? I'll bring yeah, it. Yeah, we can see it. Right. Yeah, it's in focus now. You know, still working on this guy, working on those small details, right? Um, mm -hmm. Can't really see it. 
so you like go. using like static grass and like just these little details right that looks uh, real good yeah and then and this is for uh you guys know billy moon maybe you don't know billy moon yeah. but so really trying to just add that realism in here and this is like a you know last of us style dio but i figured that just by looking at it yeah good good you can see that uh but you know vines are just old just weathered the hell right up right so um the, the variation in paint on the doors is what's selling it right there's yeah i mean it's great yeah too many times people will just throw like one coat maybe two or a wash oh and no this is like five time. or six and it's not done yet right there's gonna be some other colors on here but yeah to get that weather look you really got to go you know you got to add sand add sand and then weather right and you get mm -hmm. those various you know variations and colors that you know makes it look like it's been there for a long, very long time yeah real right, working yeah. doors <laughs> i'm not familiar with with that must be on some sort of page. we know that and listen i really like your level of detail because i remember having to uh pull mario's leg to add some leaves to uh so <laughs> <laughs> i was like mario mario you don't like how flat it looks because there's no leaves there's no sludge there's no dirt add it bro add the trash you know what uh mike uses photo references and i don't and that's been the thing that's killed me and then lately i've been using photo references you gotta have references for everything even like chamba says like when you're drawing he's like you gotta have a reference of like the pose or something like your brain can't you can't go off of memory so i start filling in junk and then you think it's right and mm -hmm. you gotta have you gotta have that check have a right. reference yeah, yeah. yeah. so <clears throat> um yeah how much how long do you guys want to go tonight alex should have been a question um, we had I, I, I was just following your leads <laughs> Man, yeah, was, not, that's not probably mario. a bad example because we'll go that first oh my god yeah first interview with mario what would we do like five or six hours seven like a couple years ago seven no no way <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can go i can go a little bit longer if you want to talk to I chat or any more questions or whatever yeah, we can take some. Yeah, Go questions ahead. from the chat. Yeah. Um, so if you guys got any questions for Alex, what we'll do is we'll we'll take some questions from from you guys for Alex, and then uh, we'll do some plugs, and then we'll get out of here, and then we can talk backstage, us three. Um, and then there are some starred questions, so you guys ask some questions, and then I'm gonna run through these ones that came in through the night, and we'll get these answered as best we can <clears throat> so cap libs had one aside from the monitors what's the next thing you want to try to uh in your figure photography alex uh quit quit he wants to try to quit. <laughs> I, I want to i want to achieve that goal and be done that's really the that's really the only other thing no um definitely get some stands from mario that's actually legitimate an answer to this question <laughs> is get some stands and some monitors and then we'll then we'll be ready to go <laughs> all right there we go uh oh what's your favorite line to shoot that's a tough one because i hate shooting everything so um i i it, it's really tough i'd have to say maybe legends because they sometimes move a little bit better than mezco and they're, they're just kind of, you know, all the Mario, who look, man, love you, bro, but you're killing me. You're killing me tonight. <laughs> no, but uh, Le Legends, I'd say, because it's just kind of like the, the, the Swiss Army knife. You can kind of you can kind of do what you what you want with them. So they're kind of simple to shoot. So, yeah, I'd say them. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a very serious question. <laughs> yes, absolutely blocked. Next question. <laughs> Cap lives with all the questions tonight. Secret to keeping a fire, fro. Uh, Cap, you tell me because I've seen your fro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are the rest of the questions at? Here we go. Another. <laughs> um, it is set in 2020. If that's what your question is, when is it coming out? 
Um, I don't know. Pray about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just skip that one, Mike. Skip that one. Really? Just Wait, is, is Attack of the Clones your favorite Star Wars film? Mario, listen, man, you already held up Fei Long. <laughs> <laughs> you already did it, man. Look, man, it's getting crazy right now. <laughs> I'm ignoring that question, Cap. Right, you we'll know move. how that makes me feel. We'll move on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> all right. I think that's all. Unless I missed anything, Mario. Did I miss anything? No. Uh, I do have a question for Alex, though. Uh, when can we see some new photos? See, um, I thought you already asked that. I did, and I'll keep asking. Okay. Do you want the same answer? Or you want me to think of a new one? Next week? Was it next week? I forgot. How about this? How about um, whenever I get Fei Long? <laughs> oh, okay. <I'm> gonna... <laughs> you'll see. You'll see a photo. How about that? I'll send it out to you. I'm going to force the issue on Paylon. Or better yet, when I get my uh, magnum opus from 796 Studios. All right. All right. Cool. I better work <laughs> on that now. Yes. Trevor, that, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. What's up, Trevor? That, that means absolutely a lot to me. Thank you. Alex, you, you're you're right up there with the Trevors of the world, man. So oh, please, please. Your, your work, and I'm being serious. Your work is 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 some of the best work out there and um the only thing better than your work is you as a person you are one of the most positive one of the most supportive people in this community man we need more of you so any advice for photographers anything you want to close out on before we leave? um don't commission anything from 796 studios <laughs> <laughs> yeah, solid, sound advice and everybody only commission high school creations. Um, make sure you have two batteries because one will die on you in the middle of shooting. And it's not fun when you only have one. Have two batteries. But no, seriously, practice makes perfect. Just have fun and just do it constantly. You know, that's the big thing. You know, you, you just want to keep doing it. The more you do it, the better you'll get. You're not going to get better if you take a photo once every, you know, three years like I do. Um, so, or worse, once every decade, like Mario. So you just kinda, <laughs> you want to practice a lot and just have fun. Don't worry about comparing yourself to other people. And also, imitation is a really good way to learn. You know, like okay, they did this photo. Let me see if I can do that that pose that they did. Oh, it's not that hard. Let me see if I can do the lighting like they did. Oh, it's not that hard. You know, so just keep practicing, keep doing what you're doing, just have fun. Don't get caught up in it. And that's that's the best advice you can get. Besides not commissioning seven on six studios to make you a die. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the, the main main takeaway right there. Do not commission. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh where can people keep up with you, man? Uh on Instagram, I'm at Alex N. Richardson on Instagram. Uh you'll probably see more story posts than anything else because I'm slacking. Um you can also find me randomly on an Enablers Live uh, trying to get Mario to do something other than procrastinate. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're talking. You, we're talking after this. We're talking after this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Alexander Richardson. Um, I'll, I'll post photos at some point when I get a Fei Long or a Dio. Um, I'll, I'll, post a, I'll post a photo. I'm uh, I'm constantly hunting every day for Fei Long for Machu. I'll I'll put you in the mix too if I find another Fei Long. Oh, now I'm in the mix. I had to come on the show to get in the mix. I, I well, you said you didn't believe in Fei Long and he existed, but now that I showed you, so right. Yes, yes, multiple times when I asked you not to show me. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> with that. Um... Alex, big thank you for coming on. You know, thank you for having um, me. Yeah, a huge fan of all your work. Huge, huge talent. Thank you for all the tips tonight. And again, thank you for your time and coming in and talking with me and Mario. Talking smack to Mario. <laughs> Motivate Mario. Right, somebody has to do it. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, 
I'm High School Creations, guys. Again, the promo code for the 30% off Wall XD will last until the end of this show. So once the credits roll, it is done. So if you guys want a Wall XD for 30% off, go find it now at highschoolcreations.com. Uh, and outside of that, you can find me anywhere around the internet. It's High School Creations, High School Creations, High School Creations. Mario, you ready to send us out? Yeah. Uh, you can find me at 796 Studios on Instagram. You can check me out on the first Tuesday of every week on Chet Migos Assemble. You can catch us, Mike and I, next week on Kev's channel, Unboxing Thursdays, Enablers Edition. Uh, I think Waifu Wednesdays might actually be a thing, so stay tuned. Uh, but yeah, thanks for everybody joining. Go follow Alex and Richardson. He is one of the best. We appreciate every single one of you. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.